seven iconic housewives from four different cities. Look at this water. We're going to give them something to talk about. Vacation at Turks and Caicos. It's a party now. The Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip. All episodes streaming now, only on Peacock. So I love Zachary Levi. I really do. But like, sadly, play quarterback is beyond his scope as an actor. That's well. That's a that's, that's not a co owner to Bill, right? Yeah. That's a bad writing thing. It's so good though, because they actually have to show that here. Yes. He's maybe broken up with Brenda, so he's just like. Long after <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's so stupid. But it's and and it's it, to do one better. It's an impossible acting challenge. He has to sadly win at football. Yes. Like you, yes. you have to sadly play well. That's hard right. to do. God awful movie movie movie. Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema, because compared to this, the Screaming Lambs are downright pleasant. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Thanks, Noah. <laughs> this is so bad. It Let's was go. pretty Let's fucking bad. I was. I, it's worse than I expected. Now, unfortunately, Eli will be unable to join us this week, but we're excited to welcome back returning guest masochist and host of the Opening Arguments podcast, Thomas Smith, in his stead. Thomas, Woo! Welcome back, sir. Hey, thanks for having me to uh, keep praise upon this movie. Yeah, yeah. It was a field trip. We saw this in the theater. That's yep. why you heard Noah coughing just now. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I muted my microphone so they didn't hear that. But yeah. Well, edit it back in somehow. <laughs> yeah. Morgan, just that was really in. funny. Hey, and Morgan, put this in. <laughs> there it is. Yeah. All right. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched American Underdog. It's not the story of one of the greatest moments in football history. No. Uh -uh. It's the story of really boring stuff with Kurt Warner <laughs> that was kind of adjacent to that amazing moment that I'm talking about. We'll get big pin in that moment. We'll get there. Kurt because Warner, it's the really funny how they the don't movie. get there in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> Thomas, how bad was this movie? I think it was fucking great. You guys are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no, so it's, not, it, it's not. It's real. It's cheesy as hell. Just out of curiosity, did you guys look at the reviews, Tomato Meter, any of that? No, uh, I, I have not, not looked okay. at any of that. No. Could you guess? I have the scores. I would like you oh, to really? guess the Tomato Meter score and the audience score. Okay, I'm going to oh, say okay. Tomato Meter. Little, little game show. 91. Under. Ooh. I'm taking the under by a lot. Okay. The way Thomas said it, it had to be high in my head, so I wouldn't be surprised if it's under. The audience reviews is also as a bonus or something, as a tiebreaker. I don't know. Okay. What do, what do you think? All right, so I'm going to say audience score. I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to say audience score 91, tomato meter 79. I'm going to go under and over. Under on the tomato meter and over on the uh, audience score. I, I'm thinking it's more it's, like... It's hard to believe you are. You guys aren't cheating because you've... you've. It, this is like if somebody posted a one on Wordle. <laughs> I got a one. <laughs> it's 75 tomato meter, 98 audience review. 98% audience okay, reviews. This close. is it. Wow. 75 tomato meter. That's like a good movie. Yeah. <laughs> I just... I this is better than The Matrix 4, just in case anybody, like, okay. by a mile well, on you know, Tomato okay. Meter. We considered doing The Matrix 4 as a bonus. We'll, yeah, we'll yeah we get may that still. May still. <laughs> it's so funny. Oh, good times. Now, of course, I should just say up front that we are all football fans who remember the season that this movie is about. Yeah. And I'd venture to say that most of our listeners couldn't give two shits about American football if the first shit was provided for them. <laughs> That's valid. Right? That's fine. So we're we're going to try to keep that in mind throughout, I promise. We'll say a few football stuff things, but like, we'll yes, try, we're, we're we'll, mostly making fun of it. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just want to add on to that. Not only do you guys you know, remember the season this was about, this was the team of my household. Oh, oh really? really? My dad is from L.A. or oh, was. The, L.A. Rams, right? Yeah. He's L.A. sports fans, but the Rams moved to St. Louis. So we still watch the shitty fucking Rams for years lose every fucking game forever until all of a sudden, the, well, something you you barely see in this movie about a boring love <laughs> yeah, story. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so all of a sudden, one of the greatest Cinderella stories in all the history of sports happened yep. that this movie decided to sort of 
allude to a little. To allude <laughs> this to. This team was called the the greatest show on turf. It's yep. literally so but good. They don't even get to that in the movie. Just no, fucking nope. barely. It's so no. stupid. No. Oh, so uh, maybe that's coloring my view that I actually enjoyed this quite a bit because that football season was so fucking formative to my life. It was that I was like thirteen. Wow. I was. It was. It couldn't have been more perfect for like. Yeah. You know, a young Thomas to enjoy the season of football. Oh man, yeah. This is like the '94 Rangers having a shitty, boring movie about Mark Messier, like at a, at a <laughs> library. Or <laughs> so is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at i would okay so <laughs> i have two and one of them apparently would have been thomas if we were in the same theater <laughs> i had the two absolute best worst dude bros in my theater that oh, were really? huge huge kurt <laughs> warner fans and i bet thomas were you by any chance in ann arbor michigan about Three weeks ago when I watched this secretly without telling me. No, I, I didn't follow you outside your door when you left to go to the movie and walk <laughs> two blocks behind you so you wouldn't see me. I didn't. No, definitely. Okay. What, what are you talking so about? That was a cardboard no. box. I don't know what the hell you're talking so very about. It's just a regular no, cardboard yeah, okay. box. No. Got it. You were in the, my theater. You, you, <laughs> were you in my theater? Well, I don't. You're just reversing it now. Okay. So these two guys were so fucking excited about Kurt Warren. They they kept saying, like, it's like they were auditioning for me to talk about them during this show. <laughs> every, like, every 10 seconds during the pre-show moments, there was just like, Kurt Warner, Kurt Warner. And they would say it back and forth to each other as a call and response. <laughs> what? From the moment they walked in, it was like, Kurt, Kurt say Warner. Kurt, you say Warner. <laughs> it was so much for that. It was insane. I'm not exaggerating. They did the Kurt Warner call and response. 10 times minimum <laughs> in the first like 10 minutes, you know, before the, before the movie starts. So stupid. So now I was going to go with, and of course we've alluded to this with almost everything we've talked about uh, leading into the best worst, but best worst, yada, yada, yada. Right? Because so every time that an NFL logo shows up or anything like that, they're paying a shit ton of money, right? Mm. Any NFL player or real guy, coach or whatever that shows up, they're paying a ton of fucking money for that. <laughs> so because of that, all of the football shit, all the stuff they would have to pay real big NFL type dollars for is squeezed into the last like 22 minutes of this movie, which <laughs> oh, is... That makes sense why they had to skip so much. Yeah, it's right. so bad. And, well, yeah, they didn't have the budget to make them. They, they're, they're not going to pay for the rights to like show us that Super Bowl. Like right, This right. is an amazing rookie season for an incredibly unlikely player that culminated in what was, at the time, the greatest Super Bowl victory ever. Probably the, ever, The yeah. best game ever played in the Super Bowl. It isn't anymore. That That's the Giants beat the Patriots. The but Giants, yeah. David Tyree. That's fair. Right, but at the time, it was the greatest game that had ever been played in the NFL. They just, that is that is in the Breakfast Club close of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> just amazing. Kurt Warner went on to be having an amazing yes. story that we will not tell. Right, 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 we don't have Free right frame, and he also mm -hmm. won a Super Bowl. Yeah, exactly. Yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> My best worst is, I'm going to pair it with a best best, which is best worst evangelizing. I, but I'm going <laughs> to say best best, like triangulation of figuring out how much God they could actually put in the movie and have it still be a movie. I love it. <laughs> yep. It's like a formula. I imagine Adam Baldwin or Billy Baldwin, one of the Baldwins that's a coach. <laughs> I imagine him doing some calculus and just like being like, we can put exactly 3.7 gods in this right. movie. <laughs> and it's still a movie. Otherwise, a, a few more and it's just some Christian fucking bullshit. We, we have real actors in this. <laughs> this is the Goldilocks zone of evangelizing right. that they triangulated. Yeah, Holy. exactly. How much? I thought it was going the other way. I thought it was like, okay, we have to put at least 3.7 gods in there. And then if we, we do that, then the Christians will come see it. You know? Yeah. No, no I actually fucked up my joke. I read the line wrong. Uh, Adam Baldwin's over there on the uh, X axis of like, no, we need 20 gods in there. And then the, everybody else is like, no, we can do three. We'll write, we'll do like the it's supply and demand curve. Yeah. It meets at 3.7 gods. <laughs> because, but, and here's the thing I suggested this movie to Heath because I saw the preview. All 3.7 gods are in the preview. <laughs> like yep. basically all, at least that I saw. I saw this as a preview in a fucking, for some other movie that I was, I don't remember what it was. 
all the gods are there. I'm like, oh my God, they made a Christian movie about the best season of football, like formative of my life. And I fucking love Kurt Warner. I cannot wait to do this. I get there. The evangelizing is terrible. We'll get to it. Mm-hmm. But pin in that, it's awful. There's, it's, they don't even try. I wanted to be evangelized harder. Like I feel like, you know, right. you know what I mean? Like it's a rip off. Like, come on, try to sell me on the whole God <laughs> <Right>. thing. <laughs> like a really sad person trying to do the, the pyramid scheme thing for you. And you're just like, no, 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 you go, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> try to sell it to me. I feel bad for you now. I love being sold. I love getting a bullshit sales thing. It's my no. favorite. I just like, Maybe yeah, I do, will no, do your thing. Sell me on this. Uh, yeah. God wants you to throw a football. Tell me why. Tell right. me why that yeah, is. Just, uh, just take the golf clubs. I know you. No, no, no. no please. <laughs> come on. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. I want to stay here for two hours. I have to do a podcast about it, man. Just go. Just do it. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll tell you what. There's a lot of exciting grocery store shelf stocking to come. So we're going to keep the break brief. But when we come back, we'll dive into all the heartwarming banality that is American Underdog. Hey, Heath, what do you have there? Oh, it's a new workout device. It's going to help motivate me to get in shape this year. A mirror? Yeah. Yeah, it is a mirror. But once I hook it up to the Wi-Fi... It'll yell at me for eating donuts. Why? For the for the motivation. Wow, that seems really expensive. Well, yeah, that's it's very expensive considering what it does. But I got it on an installment plan. Oh, how many installments? I, I'm not legally required to uh, answer that, actually. It's, it's a number. Look, Keith, you don't need fancy equipment or spiteful mirrors to get in shape if you really want to get fit this year. Why not try FitBod? Oh, what's... FitBod, Thomas. FitBod, Keith, is a service that creates a workout program based on your unique goals, experience, and equipment. Their algorithm uses data and analytics to build on your last workout to maximize results. So whether you exercise three days a week or twice a day, every workout is scientifically proven to be better than the last. Wow, that sounds way better than this mirror that it actually calls me a pudgy pudgy piggy. It's it's, that's exact words. It sure is. FitBot is easy to use and even has brand new HD video tutorials to make learning new exercises a breeze. And the best part is FitBot is only $12.99 a month or $79.99 a year. If you sign up now, you'll get 25% off your membership. Wow, that is way less expensive than the mirror. How much less? It's not. It's just moving on. None of your business. Go ahead. Well, then kick the new year off right and get started on your customized fitness plan from FitBot. Get 25% off a membership when you sign up now at fitbod.me slash gam. That's 25% off your membership at fitbod.me slash gam. All right. I guess I don't need this mirror after all. Nice. So now who's going to call you a pudgy, pudgy piggy? Oh, Eli's going to be back next week. He does that a lot. Got it. Mr. Warner. Howdy, fellas. Wow, you you are just you are a legend. I am so honored to be working with you on this movie. Ha <laughs> shucks. Hi, I'm Mr. Warner's lawyer. Hey, great to meet you. So I've got to say, this is the kind of story you just dream of as a writer. The, the, the way that you rose up from stocking grocery store shelves to being a Super Bowl winning MVP quarterback. Well, oh, you just you inspired a generation. And 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 with the natural drama of a football season as our uh, backdrop. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm I'm sorry, did you get uh, like a splinter or something? Well, no, it's just that, uh, you know, Mr. Warner's rookie season is copyrighted by the NFL and any pictures, descriptions, or accounts of the game without the NFL's consent is prohibited. I, accounts of the I don't think that's actually true. Well, the point is that we don't have the rights to the whole season. Oh, Oh, no, that's okay, though. Uh, we, we, we can focus a lot on the offseason aspects of his first season with the Rams. I, I'm sure that... Uh, yeah, those logos are pretty expensive. Oh, wow, okay. I mean, maybe we can sprinkle them in a little bit late in Act 3. Late in Act 3? Yeah. Okay, so uh, so you want me to write a movie that mostly focuses on Mr. Warner's time with the Iowa Barnstormers? Uh, Please tell me it is a splinter this time. No, it's just that those logos are, while cheaper, still pretty expensive. We can't afford Arena League logos? I mean, we can use them a little. Okay, so and in his time at the University of Northern Iowa. Uh, yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so you want me to make a movie about Kurt Warner's career that doesn't spend much time on his collegiate arena league or NFL careers. There you go. Uh what well, what's left? Um hmm. Oh, uh what about the time I met my wife? Well, is is that interesting in in any way? We met at a bar. Well, so no. It's we were both in the same line dance. It was pretty sweet. Okay, so so negative interesting. I I ran in snow 
once in Iowa. Why are you telling me that? It's really cold. Like rock. You know, I, I gotta like be movie honest. cold. I I don't see why anybody would want to watch this movie. Okay, hear me out. Faith based. Oh no, yeah, that'll work. I'm kind of Christian. <laughs> <laughs> And we're back for the breakdown. And in case you're wondering how long we go before there's something for you to hate, we're going to open up on Ronald Reagan <laughs> doing the coin toss for Super Bowl 19. Worst movie with a Ronald Reagan cold open, I think. And that's oh wow, that's saying a lot. Yeah. Jeez, wow. I don't know. <laughs> there are no good movies with that. <laughs> I'm scanning no. my brain. I yeah, <laughs> oh, big claim, but I think you might be right. Yeah. So, yeah, so we start with this. He's watching the Super Bowl as a kid, and we've got adult Kurt giving us this voiceover about what made Joe Montana great. And that was apparently his ability to get the fuck knocked out of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah, Montana got hit a lot, but he was just like one of the best actual quarterbacks ever. Yeah. That's what made him great. It's, it's not really this. They're going to focus on this whole thing of like staying in the pocket. That's like a theme of the movie. Mm -hmm. Like you got to stay in the pocket as a quarterback, but that's one tiny little thing maybe that Montana did, but yeah. <laughs> that's not why he was great. Same exact football notes. I guess, uh, you know, Noah's going to kill us for getting into football too much, but yeah, like that doesn't make you good. Taking hits doesn't make you good. There is very little discussion. Indeed, maybe no discussion in this entire movie about like, well, also he throws the ball well. Yeah, right. <laughs> Which like, is really the crux of the yeah, argument. Kind of what matters. Yeah, like yeah. I'm sure a lot of people could just take a hit and not die, I guess, is the challenge there. Like, yeah. Well, okay, so let me, let me uh, fuck up my credentials altogether and give you guys any shit for talking too much actual football stuff. What made Mike Martz's offense so good, the, the one that Kurt Warner succeeded in, was that they would not really protect the quarterback very well, right? They would mm. send more people out so he'd have more options. So a big part of what made Kurt Warner great was his willingness to get the shit knocked out of him over and over and over in a way that almost no other quarterback would. Right. So they have to set up early that no, no, that actually is a very big talent. If you think about it, getting the shit knocked out of you. <laughs> well, if you're going to set that up, then shouldn't you explain that at all to your audience? Because that's not explained. That would be great. <laughs> you would think. And the other thing is what also makes great quarterbacks is if they were elusive enough to just avoid getting hit. You know, like that's another option. That also helps. Yeah. You can do that. <laughs> yeah in, in fact, if you're in the pocket and you're about to get blasted and not do a successful play, <laughs> yes, the yes. best thing to do would be oh, leave God. that area. Leave the pocket. The best yeah. block, no be there. You don't wait. You hold on. You don't get bonus points in football for getting sacked within the pocket rather than I don't, right, think, yeah. I don't think that it God. doesn't affect your, your football outcome now. Also, he was too fucking slow to leave the pocket. Well, that's yeah, right. the other he thing. Going anywhere. <laughs> right, if you were able to leave the pocket, maybe you'd have more than what, like four rushing touchdowns in your fucking career. I am much faster than Kurt Warner. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> think about that. That's yo. real bad. Oh, there's also, and just to, you know, apparently just to get under Heath's skin early, he fucks up a math thing early. So stupid, too. <laughs> Come on, man. He tells you that like the odds of becoming an NFL quarterback are so low. Only <laughs> one in a thousand high school kid. How many college kids? And he names numbers. That, you know, what's the fraction? Yep. And then he <laughs> says right after that, my story is impossible. And I was like, dude, you just said non-zero odds. Just now. Your story is just inevitable. Now. You just did the math. That was one in all. It would be yeah. zero in something. All true stories are inevitable. And you said impossible <laughs> after naming a number that's not zero. So many things wrong in math. Worse than the football. It's like he got to a high enough number where he's like, well, definitely, you know, math people, they, aren't, they haven't invented a number that high, so it's got to yeah, be right. impossible. Yeah, right. No, it's, it must be. be impossible. I love, yeah, <laughs> right, right. Exactly. It's like, it, you know, it, look, if we just made movies about random people and it happened that this one was a quarterback <laughs> and MVP, <laughs> yeah, that exactly. would be a big deal. But no. Yeah. We'd have no. to watch like 10 billion movies before we got to the one. Yeah, that would be interesting. This is a true story chosen at random from all <laughs> yeah. the people ever. <laughs> exactly. And he's an NFL quarterback. That what would be a miracle. Odds? You're right. I love it. He's giving us it. He's one out. His story is essentially, I think he arrives at like one out of a, a million or one out of a, what does he arrive at? One. I don't even know what number, but it's just like, you're right. Like, well, okay. Multiply it then by the number. What's the denominator? Multiply by that. Yep. Right. <laughs> What's the numerator? So like, you're saying there's a chance, not like yeah. sarcastically. You're saying <laughs> yeah. there's a chance. We're in the world that contains all those people. So right. <laughs> exactly. How exactly. Do we get to we hear from them. We can just make then? a movie about whichever of them we want. Yeah. And speaking of something annoying us instantly, I have to ask. I'm sorry. I have to ask. 
Why American underdog? Is there any reason? Because America, fuck yeah. This is a, this is a Christian movie, Thomas. Because truck nuts. This is what I love. It's such Why do a you pandering hate freedom, movie. Thomas? Man. I do hate freedom. <laughs> I want slavery. He, there's such a, it's such a pandering movie. There's nothing about Kurt Warner or anything. He didn't play for like Dallas, you know, like America's team or, no. you know, there's nothing about him that's like particularly American. He played for the Northern Iowa Panthers, America's team, <laughs> yeah. Thomas, yeah. in and the, the Southern Louis Missouri Louis Conference Man. or whatever the fuck. <laughs> it's like if Rocky was called American Rocky. Like, right. Okay. Yeah, no. It's just called Rocky. <laughs> like you don't need, it's not American. Oh, never. It happens in America. Yeah. Okay. But right. Yeah. The there's a lot of movies do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So, but we're going to start the movie proper. And now for people who don't know college sports, this might sound like I'm making a joke. I'm not. We start in Kurt's fifth year in college <laughs> as quarterback. He's finally going to get put in after, after four years of apparently warming a bench. Lots of people go to college for five more years. Most of them are called doctors plus football players. Yeah. yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And this is, of course, we, we reinforce the, the message from the last scene. They're telling him to stay in the pocket, but he just can't do it. <laughs> so d He's a pocket maverick. That's like, yeah. th 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 they're going for that the whole time. <laughs> He's a pocket maverick? It doesn't make any sense. Yeah. You should sometimes leave the pocket, sometimes right. stay in it. It's just, yep. it's so dumb to make this a theme of your football movie. And they have him throw a touchdown every single time he leaves the pocket. Every yeah, single right. time. <laughs> Which, like, they're trying to make it be, like, the counterintuitive thing. Whenever you de portray some sort of brilliant thing in a movie, it's, it has to be counterintuitive. It can't be what the thing you think, because that's not genius. Otherwise, anyone can think of that. He's a genius, right? Yeah, exactly. So it's got to be, he leaves the pocket, and every single time he throws a touchdown, to which you would expect at one of the Baldwins that's not related to the Bald <laughs> Adam Ball, somebody, to be like, oh, okay, that was good. Yeah, Actually, okay, yeah, I want you to throw the pocket, but that instance, that's that a touchdown. So, that, I mean, that's call. good. <laughs> some, you want to see the realistic thing. And you wouldn't have got called for grounding from over <laughs> right, there. Yeah. So yeah. Like, they should have just shown him, like, <laughs> leave the pocket, and so, therefore, his O-line can't block for him, and he gets just fucking, yeah. you know, or something. It's so dumb. Right. right, and he throws a pick from outside of the pocket because yeah, right, he was right. running and throwing across his body. Or he gets or he gets sacked, and he fumbles, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. they even emphasize, I think it even says, oh, he's throwing off his back foot, crosses body i was like oh okay it's gonna be a pick six now he's gonna get picked off right yeah yeah but no too dumb all right so we 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 get done with that tiny little taste of football that's all we're gonna get uh, yeah. a little, <laughs> little tiny tastes here and there. yeah sorry we talked a lot about football but it is it's dumb it's bad at it and i felt like you know that scene in arrested development where uh george michael it says he stayed up late to watch oz and he's yeah. dressed in his Tin Man outfit, <laughs> and but it's Oz the horrible, you know, like prison yeah. show or whatever. That was me with football for this movie. I was, like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, football. Oh, it starts out right away, football, and then just four hours yeah. of the boringest dating <laughs> bullshit. Yeah. <that's> nothing. <laughs> right. There's so little football in the rest of this movie about an amazing football player. That's correct. Nope. It's time to get to the real plot of this movie. The time he met his wife. <laughs> So we're going to get there. He's he's putting together his but don't answer yet real for the NFL when his buddy, his best, some of his best friends who are black shows up to ask him if he wants to go to a country bar with him for, for some for some drinking and mm -hmm. partying. Do you make a reel to get into the NFL? Is that a real thing? I'm sure that that's a real thing. Yeah. You send it like a teaser tape. I hope you put like one Shakespearean monologue in that reel. <laughs> <laughs> Tomorrow oh, wow. and tomorrow, <laughs> I throw the ball now. All right. So just in case you needed more reasons to hate this movie, they head to a country bar for some line dancing. I love it, too, because what we're going to get eventually is we start with Kurt Warner for some reason is like us. He's like, well, this fucking sucks. I hate country. This is dumb. And then he sees, you know, Anna Paquin and he does the thing that I know we've all done, which is. He kind of is like trying to get into the shitty thing because the the, the pretty girl <laughs> yeah. likes it. Right. And, uh, <laughs> we've all been there, you know, yeah. and I just have a message. Just don't. It's not worth it. Like, just don't. Because by the time, you know, the skin sags and the relationship <laughs> sours, you're going to be left with fucking country music. And that's yeah. not worth it for anything. No, no. To quote the great Han Solo, no reward is worth this. You, you, yes. you can't, don't pretend to like country music for a girl. I'm just saying. Yes, amen, brother. Also, she looks like she got prank cigar in this movie. <laughs> Anna Paquin looks like a cigar just exploded in her face for the whole movie. 
and I, I'm, I find Anna Paquin attractive. Somehow they managed to mess that up and have her look explodey. Yeah, yeah they, I don't know why. <laughs> they actually they didn't mess that up. That is precisely what Kurt Warner's wife looked like. They, yeah, right. They, oh, they could not make Anna Paquin attractive and look like Brenda Warner. Yeah, that's right. But Kurt Warner's wife, if you look at pictures, she had some really good looks. She changed her looks a lot. She had some really good ones. This was not a not a good one. This was. Uh, I'm glad she moved on from this one. She had some better <laughs> okay. looks. Her ninety. Yeah, a lot of people had bad nineties looks. To be fair, Frank Walnut and the tailpipe look. Yep. Or whatever. <laughs> it's not. It wasn't one of her better ones. And so as they start to meet and they fucking yeah, oh, they're getting to know each other. I love it. A song comes on and he's like, oh, well, uh, I like this one. You know, he's trying to do the like maybe country music ain't so bad kind of bullshit. And she goes, oh, why? And he, he's like. Ah, uh, you got me. I, I, I hate it actually. I try. He has no answer. <laughs> As Han Solo once said, it's not yeah. worth it. I'm giving up. <laughs> it's like, it's different. His answer is literally, uh, it's, it's different than <laughs> right. like you. It's different like you. Oh, thank God. Do you think, do you think she, <laughs> think she knows? Well, yeah, it's so fucking, this whole, they have their little conversation and their little line dance and everything. It's so boring. I wrote in my notes. I'm glad these two wound up together so nobody else got stuck with either of them. <laughs> Jesus. The next thing I wrote in my notes, by the way, is I bet I could slip my wrist with these ticket stubs if I wanted it bad enough. <laughs> oh, God. And then we have to watch them flirt some more. They they barn dance for a second and then they sit at the bar and they talk. Oh. And it's she tries to do the thing of like, pretending to be interested in a thing yeah. that he's into. So she's like, explain why you love football so much. It sounds fascinating. No, <laughs> he's like, let, let me give you the actual line. <laughs> this is the actual line that was written into the fucking script for Anna Paquin to say. So football, tell me about that. <laughs> okay. I didn't even remember that. Was, that was the exact <laughs> line. Yeah. Which is amazing. He didn't take the cue that this, okay, just be honest. You don't want me to tell you about football. Like that's what you're supposed to say there. <laughs> I wish he would have gone the other way. He's like, okay, 11 guys on each side, right? Okay. And then he's like, you know, he should have just explained the entire rules of football and every Super Bowl up until that point. No, no, it's neither of those awesome options. That would he, he very slowly, like as if he had to remember what football was in this moment. He's like, I like the, well, the ball. Yep. Is, yeah, I like the the ball of it. But once again, I have to throw in the actual line that he says, and I quote, as long as I have a ball in my hands, <laughs> no. I feel like everything will be all right. Okay. <laughs> you can't make that work. Like there's some stuff you could make that work with, you know, if you're like, I don't know if you're into hiking or you're, in, or you're like something with the ocean, maybe you can make that work for women. Like, yeah, as long as I, sure. you know, when I have that, when I'm feeding that orphan do dolphin, you know, and I'm just, when I have that dolphin in my arms, that everything, but when you're like, when I get the warm grip of a ball, in my hands it doesn't <laughs> it just doesn't work dude what are you talking about also we should point out that playing kurt warner here is fucking shazam yep it's right it's uh nbc's chuck yes yeah i like this actor it, it's i like him i like anna pack zach it, levi it drove me nuts wait shazam is that the one with sinbad yes as the genie mm -hmm. <laughs> nope <laughs> so. shaquille o'neal no sinbad shaquille o'neal so Nelson Mandela's dead. <laughs> he is. Now he is. So yeah, so so they have their conversation, but then she leaves, right? She's like, oh, it's, you know, the uh, bar's closed and I got to go. And he's like, well, let me get your number. And she's like, no, I, I have kids and they're shitty and you'll hate me. Bye. Right. Yep. <laughs> yep. I'm a gross harlot who divorced. You know, yep. I'm not worth it. That, that's really said here. Yep. And they don't like walk that back at all during the movie. No, as a matter of fact, the movie has that whole like, but he loved her even though she was a gross harlot who was yeah. divorced mm -hmm. kind of a feel to it. They do the opposite. Exactly. Mm -hmm. They double down on that. Yep. That's the theme. Well, and that's the next scene as well, right? So we cut to next morning. Brenda is momming and momming sure is hard at the beginning of movies. Oh, God, dude. She's a single mom. Are you kidding me? That is fucking hard. And uh, the, he does the dumbest move I've ever seen in the history of romance on screen, <laughs> which is he shows up at the woman's house the next morning. Unannounced. Unannounced. Who he doesn't know. Didn't get to know her name, by the way. Like that didn't was even a, give him her phone number. Yep. So at this point, I was like, he must have followed her car. Yeah. Home from the bar like behind by a couple blocks. And then when she pulled into her house, he left and now he knows the address. Yeah. Like me with the theater with you. I mean, like I didn't do, like I didn't do the theater with you. Heath, right, like the, the opposite of what yeah. you did. Yeah. The opposite not do. of that. The opposite of not. No. And, and 
by the way, he doesn't like come. She, she doesn't like hear a knock at the door and then come and see him there. No, she looks out the window and he's standing there with a flower. Like if you lived in Florida, she would be legally obligated to shoot him in the head. <laughs> oh, he'd be dead. <laughs> He'd be a dead man. There would be no Kurt Warner football story that we don't get to in this movie. Well, if he was Colin Kaepernick, he'd be a dead man. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. Yeah, he goes to the side door. This is the he looks in the glass. The, mo- the poor single mother at home after a, in the morning after a night of like, what are you talking about? You fucking creep! Right? She's probably hung over and yeah. yeah. This is uh, wow. Right? But no, because it's a movie, and I guess maybe real life. I don't. I don't. No, I have a feeling like these events were probably separated by more than an evening, you know, or a night. Yeah, maybe he goes inside with, kind of without even permission. She just is like, oh, I got to help my, you know, one of my humans that I watch. He just lets himself in, helps the the blind. Am I nuts or is this kid Asian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the actor okay. was. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She has an Asian kid and a non-Asian kid. Whatever. OK, it's going to be a theme. I'll tell you why. He just helps this blind kid with his radio and the grandma, so her mom walks into the bathroom to see a strange man lying on the bathroom floor with her gr- blind grandson. That is correct. Yes. All that happens. And the movie seems to think the message here is he sure is good with kids, <laughs> yeah, huh? Right. Instead of the first reaction for a grandma who was, by the way, trying to go to the bathroom, I think, she walks to the bathroom <laughs> Probably. Instead of going, ah! and beating him with a baseball right. bat. It's saying rapist, you know, like, oh, what is that? She's, she does the like, oh, how cute. I'm going to stand at the door and observe yeah. this man I know nothing about who snuck into our house lying down with our young son. At the very least, she has to be like, you're both lying on a bathroom floor. That's weird. <laughs> yeah. Please don't do that. I don't know why people in movies do that a lot. Yeah. And it's gross. <laughs> Heath finds it gross in this real reality, though. We should not do that. She doesn't say anything like that. She's not like, hey, you need to not break into my house and play with my grandchild unannounced. Yeah. <laughs> what is happening? None of that. Right. She's, yeah, she's uh, like, no, this is, this is cute. My, my daughter probably finds this attractive, which is bananas. But we get their extended meet cute and we, he meets the kids and, and gets her number and, and she decides retroactively that it's OK that he stalked her. And then we get back to some footballing. With Kurt demanding to know from the coach why they won't put him in, and it's because he just won't stay in the goddamn pocket. Mm-hmm. They're still on about that shit. In order to get on the field, what you need to do is <laughs> stay in the pocket. <laughs> get CTE because well, yeah, right, right. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we get a fucking montage of them like, okay, hit him a bunch of times and see if he's ready for it. And I'm like, you guys know about the concussion shit now. Yep. Like this is we're not watching a movie from 1987 when this is OK. But yeah, so we just watch a fucking montage of them hitting the fuck out of him in practice, in practice, in, in practice. Yes, they're, they're torturing a man. Yeah, so dumb. No, he, he might as well walk off the field, murder, suicide, his family right on the sideline and come back <laughs> in and be like, all right, no, I'm good. Let's I'm get ready. Part of the me, ready. Now. I need yeah. some more head trauma. This is great. Yeah. This is good practice for the <laughs> pocket. So, yeah, but but he gets hit enough, apparently. So he gets to start. So he calls Brenda with the good news and she agrees to go on a date with him now that he's the starting quarterback for the Northern Iowa Panthers. I don't know how he walked back on after the suicide part, but he did in my scenario. <laughs> yeah, right. Trust no, it's, me, it was, yeah. it's, it's that crazy of an example of something that didn't happen. And we, we get a great, fantastic date, which is them taking the shit-ass truck to some sort of body of water that I'm not even going to call a lake. You're going to sit next to, hey, look, I've been fucking broke. There is no shame in the (laughs) sit near a body of water because I'm broke date, damn it. Yeah. Totally true, except the (laughs) kids are in the truck. They're waiting in the truck. Yeah. Where's the grandma? I just want to pick, I want the scene of Brenda being like, hey, mom, got to go on a date. Can you watch the kids? She's like, nope, it's Thursday. Nope, yeah. I, it's, I'm, it's my night to fuck. <laughs> Bingo. It is my night to fuck, Brenda. You know this Thursday. I get railed on Thursdays. <laughs> You're on your own. See you later. <laughs> <laughs> she takes the kids on the date with them. Oh my God. Yeah. But so, and of course, this is where we get our obligatory one of 3.7 God references, right? So she starts talking about how somebody in her church once told her that she would do something special, probably. Yep. Yeah. And she built her life around that. She built yeah, her life yes. around a stranger one day in a place was like, you're special. G- yeah. <laughs> God's going to do something great with me is what this lady at church told me one time. So now I've <laughs> modeled my life around. But then right after that, she explains. Oh, God. She's like, yeah, but now my life fucking sucks. <laughs> my husband cheated when I was eight months pregnant. 
Also, my kid literally got smited in the eyes with blindness by the God of the universe yeah. who's supposed to do something great with me. And oh, it turns out that the kid's blind because my husband dropped that kid on his head yes. in the tub. And that's why I, I started laughing uh. so hard at this moment. And I got in trouble with the 10 people. In the oh, no, for sure. And what I love, too, is that we see Kurt Warner do again along the lines of the like, OK, what am I in for here with, with the new girl that I'm trying to get with? He goes. So uh, that that uh, that God stuff that all seems pretty important to you, huh? <laughs> like, like, like basically, like yes. what am what am I getting here? Like how how much? And then I realized this is brilliant. Maybe he realized too, except he probably not because he's an idiot. But like he could realize. I have a permanent excuse to not go to fucking church for the rest of my life. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm I'm into God. Oh, I can't go this Sunday. See, I I'm a football player, so yep. literally oh, I can right, never right, yeah. go to church with you ever. ever. But you do that. You do you. That's great. I'm like the opposite of Chick Fil A. It's, it's rough. <laughs> Just to be clear, by the way, what they're setting up is that God's mysterious way is all that shitty shit that happened to Anna Paquin's character. That horrible stuff for kids smited with blindness. Yeah. Plus, Kurt Warner fixes it in the end. That's God's right. mysterious way. That's what they're setting yeah. up here. We will have to, yeah, keep an ongoing tally of God's plan here. Well, there's it's more. A, there's it's a lot pretty more. convoluted. It's it's, we'll talk about, we'll review. It's Joker-esque before it's <laughs> over, yeah. I yeah. love a good Machiavellian argument, but this is uh, over the top. <laughs> so, and then after their little date, I wrote country music football montage in my uh, notes, and I still haven't really gotten over that. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> But he's the starter now because of his awesome ability to get the fuck knocked out of him. Mm -hmm. And he might even get drafted. He's playing so good. And we end the montage with him getting his agent. Yep. Yep. He gets an agent. This is, again, country music was playing. So I was doing like, you know, when, when you get hit with a stun grenade in a movie or whatever. Yeah, like, yeah. You know, that's me. I'm just like, ah, make it stop. <laughs> so I'll, I tune back in with my notes once the country music stopped. That's fair. <laughs> so they head to to Kurt's mom's place to watch the draft, right? <laughs> now, I was at one time in my life into football enough to watch the draft, but that is like the third most boring thing that could happen to you if you don't really love football. Yeah. yeah. And the reveal is pretty funny here, actually. So the the NFL draft takes multiple days because it's yeah. a whole lot of stuff that has to happen. Tons of people have to be picked, and there's a, there's a bunch of time between Wheeler each pick. dealing, yeah, yeah. So they and can there's trade dealing, around. and there's people yeah. calling each other. It's a whole thing. It takes multiple days, but. Kurt Warner is the only one who knows that at this moment. <laughs> yeah. So the other people at this like let's watch the draft party are like, dude, it's been, there's been four so far. Are we? How long is this draft taking? And he's like. Yeah. It's like four days. You have to keep <laughs> <laughs> and and hours and hours. It looks like it's like eight hours. Like they're gonna sit there for eight hours, two days in a row, yeah. watching the draft together. Yeah. Oh God. But I thought I thought you were talking about the big reveal of Kurt's mom fucking hates Brenda. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. We get instantly. They get out of the truck, and she's like, "Kurt, my my son. Ah, I love you." Who the fuck is that? Yep. <laughs> Mom might as well go up to Brenda, sniff her, and be like, divorced harlot, gross. <laughs> yeah. Boo. Right. Break up now. Also, like, imagine th they're going to make a movie about your life, and you go, oh, oh, put in that part where my mom fucking hated him, my yeah. wife. But she was yeah. such a disgusting piece of shit. That must be a real thing. <laughs> the girl told yeah. like, they, they, like, Brenda and his mom probably were sitting in the same row in the same theater when they saw this movie together. <laughs> <laughs> what I love, too, is in terms of the safety of the situation, if you're Brenda, you know, because we've been in these situations, you gotta go, okay, I gotta go spend time with the, the in-law, or whatever, like some situation where you're like, this is gonna suck with a person. I can't think of anything worse than a draft. There's nothing. There's <laughs> literally, so there's not even anything to distract from the <laughs> awful tension of the room. You know, you're like, right, you want to yeah, exactly. play, uh, play risk or something. Can we watch like scat porn together <laughs> instead? I don't know. Anything else. That'd be great though. So a little less awkward. What if we all fuck? I don't know. This is terrible. <laughs> it would be better. It would be better than this. So now, of course, this is the draft that he's hoping to get drafted in, but he doesn't get drafted. So we cut to Zach's birthday party. Zach is the the blind kid. We cut to Zach's birthday party and Kurt Warner coming in with this undrafted look about him. Very sad. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Best undrafted quarterback of all time, by the way. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Best undrafted player of all time. I oh, say. God, he rules. And what I love here, too, again, keep a tally. There's more, but we get a scene. So we don't really know as viewers 
Kurt could be not at all religious, not believe in any of it. You know, like we know as you and I, as humans, we know that after he won the Super Bowl, he did the, oh, praise the Lord, Jesus Christ, all that fucking bullshit. But like, mm-hmm. as a viewer, as far as we know, he fucking hated country music. And he's like, who's this God guy you keep talking to? And then we get at this birthday party. He's, you know, sadly throwing a ball through a tire, as you do. <laughs> you can totally relate to that. I, I've done so many hours of this. Though, <laughs> when, yeah, when I didn't get drafted, I also did. <laughs> <laughs> I also didn't go to college to play football, but you know, I still could have been drafted. You never know. And he goes to Brenda. He's talking to Brenda. He's like, why would God give me a dream that's never going to come true? And I'm just sitting here thinking, okay, you are talking to poor Brenda. Yes. Who believes in nothing but God, who changed her life because a stranger told her that God had a plan for her, who went into the military. She was a Marine or something. She has a cool story, actually. Yeah. And she had a kid. She had God. You know what God did to Brenda? You already covered it. So many bad things. God gave Brenda an ex-husband who cheated on her when she was eight months pregnant and then dropped their child after the divorce so they weren't parenting together, dropped the child in a bathtub, didn't tell the doctor about it or didn't tell them about it for long enough yeah. to where the child is is dealing with. That's what Brenda is dealing with. And you have the guts. You have the gall right. to be like, <laughs> God, God won't let me throw football. I'm throw football money. God's not letting me. God made me. Good enough for D1 college, but not pro football. <laughs> yeah, why would he Fuck. do that? I did the math. Give me some sympathy. Come on. Earlier. Okay. But then we have to turn things around for him, right? So we have this scene where he's having dinner with Brenda's folks who love him, by the way. And they have to tell Kurt that the Packers called and want to put him on the practice squad or whatever. But they do it all like coyly and stupid. Oh, God. Yeah. You're so right. I hate this scene. <laughs> because <laughs> the guy's like oh how are the bears gonna do this year and kurt is like yo i don't know and he's like wait a minute did the bears call is there a bear right behind me or something I <laughs> yeah know. i don't know why he would think that <laughs> and then the dad says like no and i thought oh my god that's this is just a depressing scene of like that's how right up oh, kurt that's, like, that's a good scene if that's what happened if you mention a football team in his presence he's like did they call did they call am i am i draft did they call am i going did they sign me and then it turns out no they actually did get a call, but from the Packers, the rival of the Bay, you know. Yes. And that's the, how they introduce it for it's him. So anyway, stupid. It's fucking stupid. Yeah, I hate it. So, but we hurry over to, to Packers practice and he's just oh, so, good. so overawed by Lambeau Field. And I'm like, well, yeah, I mean. I love this because we get his failure of being with the Packers. Yeah. And so he goes to the Packers and he's standing on the field, you know, as a backup QB or not even, he's not even backup. He's just on the practice squad, going to try to make the team essentially. And the guy's like, all right, Warner, get in. Pop Warner is a clever nickname. Yeah. Pop Warner. Yeah. Get in. And he's like, oh, I don't, I, I can't, I don't know the playbook yet. You know, like I can't, I, I give me tomorrow. Tomorrow I'll go in. I don't know the playbook. And then because of that, he gets fired. <laughs> and I just have to say, he tells the coach, I've been preparing my whole life for this. I've been, you know, this is my thing. And I got to ask. If you've been preparing your whole life for it, you didn't get the playbook ahead of time. We just right. had a scene where he <laughs> drove to the place for you could have been reviewing the playbook, maybe in the car. You could have been on the field with the playbook. Yeah. And I'm sorry, you can't just go out there and throw a few footballs around without knowing the fucking yeah. playbook. Improvise. You throw it to somebody. There's somebody out running out as a receiver. Clearly, if you threw it to one of them, <laughs> they'd probably be like, oh, you correctly quarterback. But <laughs> the movie plays it like. Kurt Warner's just like, I can't QB while everybody's looking when I can't be. I can't be right now. Everybody look away. And then they're all like, oh, he can't QB when people look. Right. He's fired. Right, yeah. The very next scene is them, them firing him. And, and he's like, wait, you're cutting me? He's like, the, the coach is like, well, dude, you cut yourself. I asked you to play football and you said pass. Yeah. Right? So, and, and, I'm, and I'm writing in my notes like, okay, fair. Not pass, like pass, like yeah, not the right pass. Either. Yeah, right, right. No, yeah. he's a pass as in I'm not, won't, not it. Yeah. So, okay, so he goes back home to sulk with Brenda. And Brenda suggests, she says, she's got a great idea. She's like, well, why don't you just move into my parents' house with my two children? It'll work out great. <laughs> okay. Yeah. New plan. New plan. Yes, you, you suck at football. I'll be a nurse. You're a failure. That is the new plan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the whole scene here. And he's like, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right. No, that'll work. I can't throw when people are looking and I can't pee. <laughs> So, and we should probably emphasize this because everybody presents this the Republican kind of viewpoint of like, you know, here's a guy who had nothing and he had this terrible job and he worked his way up. But like that story starts with a middle class family that was willing to take him in and just let him, mm-hmm. you know, like pay his way, pay his bills, et cetera, this whole time. Yeah. 
Iowa doesn't exist without the government allowing it to exist. The entire <laughs> region can't exist without subsidies from the government, you dumb assholes. <laughs> nope. There's no fuel there. So we get an even more Republican fever dream here, which is he goes to buy groceries. Mm -hmm. And he's like, <laughs> "Do you, I love this. This is they, they had to put this in there as like, this is the tiny amount they'll allow. He goes to buy groceries. She's like $26. He's like, do you take food stamps? And then he sees their, they, they, you know, the thing we help needed. And he's like, also, can I have an application? And it's like, this movie is so fucking Republican that that's, that's all they'll allow. Food stamps or for the one time in between you need something and then you apply for a job and that's right. what they should be. Yeah, like, there's just, no <laughs> Just a barrel of bootstraps. He grabs one, picks himself up. There's a bag of gold in his hand all of a sudden. Here you go. I will trade you. We will just barter. This works. Uh, yeah. So dumb. I did it. There was one moment in this scene that I enjoy, though. So he's walking out and then then he, he finally go, he goes back in and he's working, right? He's stocking the shelves. Yep. Yeah, mm -hmm. and we see two people who know him from Northern Iowa, from the university, uh -huh. and they're like big college football fans, and they're like, "Hey, look, it's Kurt Warner. He's wearing a smock and restocking cereal here at this shitty grocery store." Yeah. <laughs> Kurt Warner, so he's just like, "Can you guys not narrate?" We don't have to. We don't. Like, they <laughs> we don't know. know what's it's happening the right here. Movie. Yes, yes, it is. Thank you. My other favorite thing about that scene is he specifically said graveyard shift, stock and shelves, right? And then we cut to a ten-year-old kid, I guess in the store during the graveyard shift when it's I closed, guess. stocking the shelves. <laughs> <laughs> also, this is so weird to me, too, because, like, over and over again, they keep showing this box of Wheaties that Dan Marino's on, right? And he's looking at it like, oh, I wish I was on the box of Wheaties. And that's such a weird thing to focus on because Kurt Warner was never on the Wheaties box. He wasn't? Oh. No, I, I looked it up. He was... So I have to imagine that, like... Fucking Dan Marino stands outside of movie studios going, anybody want to use my Wheaties box rights? I will. <laughs> you guys have been doing a football movie. You could probably use that, huh? Does it have me in it? Well, me. That's interesting because they even do a callback where he gets on the magazine cover. Yeah, yeah. but not the Wheaties box. But I, I that would have been funny. If the guy in the store, because they do a callback later on where the guy who still works at the fucking store, because I guess not everyone is able to become an all-star quarterback. Mm -hmm. Like, not everybody can bootstraps their way. Some people just have to, you know, work at a fucking store, you know, in this world. Right. But anyway, he sees Kurt Warner actually on the magazine. It would have been funny if he's like, well, but it's not the Wheaties box. Not fucking Wheaties box. <laughs> <laughs> he said he'd get on the Wheaties, but he didn't get on it, it's so he fucking failed. He, he didn't do fucking it. Fucking failure, just like me. Oh, it's just it's flutie flakes. Nobody cares about flutie flakes. <laughs> All right. Well, I initially thought I was kidding when I wrote about dramatic shelf restocking in the intro, so I need a break to work <laughs> through that. But we're gonna be back in a flash with even more of American Underdog. It is dramatic. He does it dramatically. He's a good actor. And your stripe looks stupid. Doesn't even make you look faster or taller. It's dumb. Hey, Heath, what you doing? Oh, hey, Thomas. I'm just antagonizing these chipmunks. Why are you antagonizing chipmunks? Well, after the workout from that last ad, my muscles are really sore. And I thought, you know, what better way to relax than being beaten up by a horde of angry chipmunks? So, roasting them. Uh, and so you don't have any better options. I mean, think about it. With their tiny little fists and their tiny little karate, it should be kind of fun, right? Hmm. Has this ever happened to you? No. I'm I'm talking to the listeners, Thomas. I'm answering for the listeners. This has never happened to anyone. Put pushing past that, then why not try the Theragun Gen 4 handheld percussive therapy device? It releases your deepest muscle tension using a scientifically calibrated combo of depth, speed, and power, and it's as quiet as an electric toothbrush. It's true, Thomas. Theragun sent us one to try, and it feels amazing, both while you're using it and after. It gets to the source of that pain by releasing tension using Theragun's percussive therapy, which goes 60% deeper than vibration alone. It's true. Whether you want to treat your muscle tension from working out, an injury, or just the stresses of everyday life, there's no substitute for the Theragun Gen 4. I'm just saying that none of your listeners were otherwise going to insult chipmunks in hopes of tricking them into a massage. We obviously have very different listeners, Thomas. Anyway, try Theragun for 30 days starting at $199. Just go to therabody.com slash awful right now and get your Gen 4 Theragun today. That's therabody.com slash awful. therabody.com slash awful. Okay, I will, but I still reject the premise of this ad. Even knowing Eli? All right, withdrawn. Yeah. All right, Mr. Uh, Mr. Warner, have a seat. Thank you. 
So why, why did you apply for work here at the High V Grocers? Well, uh, I was in here, so. Uh-huh. Yeah. Oh, more. Uh, sure, 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 sure. And also, I was taking groceries off the shelf because I was shopping. And I was like, you know what? I bet I could put groceries on this shelf, too. I could totally do that. Okay. So here I am. Interesting. Uh-huh. And it says, uh, it says on your application here that your last job was... Uh, Wait a second, is this right? A quarterback for the Green Bay Packers? <laughs> well, uh, I, I was on the, the practice squad. Oh, wow. That's really cool. So, so how long did that last? Uh, we- okay. Let, let me think about it. It was like, uh, so like five, six, seven. It was like a day. It was one day. What? One day. One day. Yep. Mm-hmm. Wait, what? Why just the one day? Well, you know, the NFL, it's, it's the toughest standards in the world for football jobs. So, Pretty hard to make cut job like that. It was, it was really hard. Yeah, no, I bet. All right. Well, you know what? I think you're going to work out great here at the high fee. So great. Hey, let's get you an apron and uh, we'll get you stock at some shelves right now. Right now? Wait, did, did you, sorry, did you get a splinter or? Um... No, did not get a splinter. It, it's just, I, I don't really know where things go yet here at the store. I figure maybe I could stock some shelves like day two, day three. Well, no, no, you can't do that. You have to work all of the. All of the days that we pay you, at least, yeah. Ugh. Sound just like the Packers. Wait, is that why they fired you? What? Uh, technically, I fired myself, is what they told me. Oh, yeah, well, you're fired from here too. Yeah, figured. Hey, I can throw. Doesn't help. He's gone. <laughs> And we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin our hero with him and Brenda eating in a diner when who should walk in the door but the entrepreneurial genius (laughs) behind Arena League football, (laughs) Jim Foster. Yeah. I got to say, Arena football is kind of fun to watch, but no. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's not the entrepreneurial genius they're making him out to be here. Yeah. Absolutely. Oh, I'm glad you guys know because I was, they make this guy out to be like this genius mogul mm-hmm. thingy. I don't know this guy. It, like th- this, this character seems fake is all. I, I was like, this isn't a real guy. There's no fucking way <laughs> he's coming in, dropping piles of cash on Kurt Warner's table to get him to play the arena football. League. <laughs> yeah. But it's singles. It's mostly singles, couple of right. fives. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, but he's like, you know, I want you to play in on my arena league, but I started the league and now I own a team and now I want you to be like, quarterback for it and he's like i don't know it's not real football though and i'm like well neither is stock and groceries dumbass yeah i love they set this up as some sort of dilemma where he's like hmm i poor have no fucking money should i do this the literal only way i can make money playing the game that's the only thing i know or what or like, not <laughs> right what like what are you gonna do like slide a cereal box back across the table yeah, or maybe like, someday what about this i'll make assistant manager at the thing <laughs> are you trying to fold that cereal box stop it stop stop, stop. Dude, it's stop. not gonna it's that guy still has cereal and then, yeah right but and we have to keep in mind because they have to show us all the rock bottom shit after this, he has to have a bunch of shit happen to him before he'll decide to yeah. take the arena <laughs> league job. Everything that happens from this point on in the movie to him, though, is because he's too stubborn to play in the arena league. And unfortunately, the truth kind of messes this whole narrative up because actually he was assistant coaching at Iowa this whole time. Oh, was he? Mm. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that. They tried to be, oh, he's, he's not doing football. He's stocking shelves. His dream's dead. Oh, also, he was assistant coaching yeah, so, with, yeah, I guess, okay. the Adam Baldwin fucking character <laughs> the, this entire time. But they didn't show us that part. So, but then he goes home and he finds out that Brenda's parents are moving and he can't live rent free anymore. And I'm like, oh, rock <laughs> bottom for a fucking yeah. middle class white guy, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. I kind of enjoyed this. The dad, this dad was fun to me. He the was whole great. Time. He was good. Yeah, this dad was good, and he's like, all right, asshole, you got to move out and be like an adult with a job. We're leaving. (laughs) And then he, but this was weird. The dad's like, yeah, so like I said, you're about to be homeless. Marry my daughter right now. And I was like, what's (laughs) happening in this dad's head? (laughs) Why? Uh, Christianity, baby. Yeah, well, that's it. The dad says, look, I'm a Christian man. That's the point seven. If you were wondering about the point seven, this is the <laughs> point seven. Yeah, well, he's like, we're actually, we can't say God anymore, but I will, we're a good Christian, <laughs> we're a good Christian family. <laughs> Relationship. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. 
And now it's time for the fucking blizzard scene, which has to and can oh, only be God. here because Kurt wanted it to be very clear that he would have never played in the arena league if it hadn't been a matter of life and fucking death. <laughs> yeah. So stupid. So we get the established that there's a blizzard. There's a, just a life ending blizzard thingy. Sure. Whatever. They come in. He, he you know, she's like, do we pay the heat bill? Uh, or he says, do we pay the heat bill? She's like, you told me not to because they're broke. They got no money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she said, I love this. She's like, well, I guess I'll quit nursing school. And, you know, that's that we can't manage this. We'll just have to do that. And he goes, no, you will not quit. We don't let each other quit. Like we, we pursue our dreams. Da, da, da. This will be the last time we hear about nursing school. Yes, that is, that is. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's that's gone. Did she graduate? Did yeah. she become a nurse? No idea. Is she a nurse to this day? I fucking they yeah. just forget. Go fuck yourself. That's a lady character. It's football <laughs> time. But no, it's not. It's actually no. not football time. No. OK. Listener, I want you to think of the most boring thing you can imagine happening in a movie. And then we get to watch a car break down in Iowa. We watch oh my a God. car oh. on a long stretch of straight, flat, fucking Iowa road break down. That's the plot. Just do it. I was so mad. I was like, just do the montage of the NFL. Go do your movie. Yeah. yeah. No, we're going to do a bunch of Iowa car stuff. No, the movie literally runs out of gas. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that's what I was going to say, too. I love it. This Kurt Warner is just a dumb guy. I'm sorry. I like him, but he's a dumb guy. They almost die. They have money. Because he didn't that's the fucked fill up thing. his gas tank. <laughs> right. They run out of gas and he's like, oh, I'm going to have to run back to that store. It's a mile back. I hope I can make it before you freeze to death. Give me some money. I'm like, you have money? Yeah. Well, then why the fuck is this happening? You passed a gas station. We know this. We know that you passed yes. a gas station and made note of it. <laughs> and ran out. Look, I've run out of gas a couple times in my life because I drove shit cars that didn't. The gas meter wasn't even working, and one of them it it was working, but I was pushing. Yeah, it too sometimes much you know, really so, thought, so it's yeah. just no shame. But <laughs> neither of those times was I transporting my girlfriend and her special needs child through a death blizzard. Through a historic <laughs> fucking blizzard. Yes, the kids die in a poverty oh in the back God. of the fucking truck and everything. Yeah. Almost <laughs> murdered her close. family, like her and her family. Yes. Very close. Yep. And this is the good guy of the thing. This is his like, oh, he's such a good guy. What? What? Right. Because that's the, he thinks this is the heroic moment where he had to run for a mile in the snow <laughs> he'd uphill both yeah. ways to get the gas. And it's like, but you only had to do that because you're a fucking idiot. You saved them from you. There's no hills in Iowa. That's true. It's that's, flat, yeah. bullshit, boring. There's no hills. There's no topography. If I wrote the book about my life, I would have been like, and definitely that someone stole the gas out of some <laughs> yes, cycle, right. the gas out of the car. It wasn't just that I fucking <laughs> forgot. A car can break down for all these other reasons. It didn't have to be right, how it could have been a part dumb. that he needed. Yeah, I run, flat yeah, exactly. Tire. Run he had to go get some fix a flat. But yeah, but he finally he gets the gas. They get they get to his mom's place where there's heat that's turned on. And he's like, finally, he's like, all right, I'll play shitty arena league ball. I have to point out the language of this because it's another great Republican Christian thing. Because after this moment where, you know, he almost kills his family, murders OJ's his fucking family, uh, just slightly different. <laughs> mm-hmm. He says, slightly different. all right, I will go, <laughs> as you say, hell is frozen over. So I will go play arena football league. And she's like, no, you don't. That will, da, da, da. And he goes, look. I promised your father I'd take care of you. And I'm just like, why is that the important thing? Like, <laughs> that's a, a transaction between two men. Yes, exactly. It's not bad that you killed your family because you promised another man not to. That's not why that's bad. <laughs> but yes, the fuck it is. <laughs> it's just bad to kill your family. Like, that's, right. That's just for itself. A good reason there, too. <laughs> So, yeah, so then we cut to the cornfield where the Iowa Barnstorm is practiced. And I love this stupid ass ex- exposition because nobody remembers Arena League. Nobody knows what that fucking shit was. So they've got the coach like standing there giving the basic rules of Arena League football to his team. You know, <laughs> like that's where they're going to get to that. You get the sense that he financed this movie. Do you feel like that guy must have financed this or something? Oh, like, all right. That guy comes out as a like a really interesting, amazing Arena Football League mogul. Yeah, okay. <laughs> he really does. In fairness, Christian movies are to movies as arena football <laughs> is to football. Okay. Oh, I would. Oh, that's way too generous to Christian movies. That is very generous, but you get way the point. too generous yeah. to Christian movies. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, there's never, the, the Christian movies have never given us a Kurt Warner, right? There's, no. <laughs> Christian movies are, to, it, 
it's not it's not arena league it's like the fake you know knockoff video game without the players actual names that you yeah, play like that yeah, would exactly. be maybe <laughs> it's paper football to the nfl right, there you go <laughs> No, it's not. That's too generous, too. I love paper football. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's impossible to complete this analogy. No, it's not. There's nothing involving football that is miserable enough to be the equivalent of no, Christian movies. That's, that's true. That's the problem. It is yeah. brain yeah. injury to okay, the Okay, there you go. There the you CTE, go. You found yes. it. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. So, but we see his first game as an arena league quarterback, and he sucks because he doesn't know how to throw fast enough. He can't stand there in the pocket enough, and he doesn't get hit in the head enough. <laughs> <laughs> One more quick note on that. They illustrate that with a bad football thingy that I love, which is specifically they are backed into their own end zone. They hike the ball. He has no one to throw to. So he scrambles forward to avoid the safety like you obviously <laughs> would. And the guy's like, stop leaving the pocket. Yeah. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> so you want me to get sacked in our own but end I zone? Just, I was the pocket is. <laughs> points for the other guys. I don't, and we have, and we have to give them the back the ball. That's the worst part. Oh, yeah, God, it's like a moral victory. It's like ethical to stay like in the that. pocket, it's like, what they're doing like the captain of the cap Titanic. Yeah, <laughs> like you go, yeah, down, you go with down with the fucking ship. God yeah. damn it! And then, okay, so yeah, we head back to practice to reinforce the whole willingness to get the fuck knocked out of you is the true measure of greatness point that we've been making through the whole fucking movie. And he has to learn to do the three step drop and throw no matter what. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. In this moment, doesn't it seem like there should be some kind of, you know, karate kid stuff like Mr. Miyagi teaching you wax on, wax off? There should be a crane technique of this. of some, yeah, yeah, a crane technique, yeah. the zero step drop shown to us somehow magically, whatever it is. Yeah. But the movie doesn't know how that would work in principle. No. So all that happens is he just remembers to play good now. Yeah. Also... Why is there no discussion in any of this movie ever with this whole stay in the pocket, you know, throw fast, all that shit? There's not one discussion of, oh, yeah, an offensive line. Why don't you fucking block better? Right. Like, yes, exactly. <laughs> one time, maybe don't, don't let this fucking guy unabated to the quarterback murder your quarterback every single play. Right. Staying in the pocket and getting the fucked out and knocked out of you don't have to be one in the same. Yeah. No, no. There's another way around that. It only works if there's an actual pocket, like <laughs> right. make a pocket team yeah you know like come on he just starts doing a three-step drop and throwing the ball straight up in the air to eventually get to 10 yards downfield this huge arc <laughs> throwing to nobody every time we cut to the game it's just three and out every time <laughs> he's like but he is getting rid of it he's getting rid of the ball though look at that release time yeah and he stayed in the pocket yeah. <laughs> and he did stay in the pocket i guess it's ethical so we win right we yeah. win, right? Do we win? Oh, and then cut to the coach. I really didn't understand how the scoring worked. I thought that was how the staying in the pocket because the whole movie has been really emphasizing the standing in the pocket thing more. How than many touchdowns. ethical points did we get? So, <laughs> but of course, this this getting the fuck knocked out of him montage here dissolves into the week two game, and now he knows how to football better, and he can mm -hmm. get the fuck knocked out of him. So he starts throwing touchdowns. Yep, and. He gets a hundred dollar bill every time he throws a touchdown. Yes. So he throws a touchdown, his first touchdown, we're led to believe. Mm -hmm. And his coach whips out a hundred dollars, a cash, a bill a mm -hmm. ca on the sideline and hands it to him, which I guess he puts in his jock Where strap. Where do you put that? Yes. I don't know. <laughs> what is this? Why? Had the helmet. Like, like, come on. Well, the great thing is, is he's like, well, oh, wow, a hundred bucks a touchdown. Well, now I'll throw a bunch of them. Like, you weren't going to do that already, though? Yep. That's your job. But that's what happens. They show him, like, now yep. excitedly throwing yes, touchdowns. Yes, yeah, that, that really was. Seven touchdowns in that game. So we're to believe that Kurt Warner, who th is a whole fucking movie, is that his life is built up for football. It's his greatest thing. He loves football of all time. His favorite thing is dream. And then someone's like, but I'll give you $100 if you football better. <laughs> he's like, oh, shit. Okay. Well, $100. Oh, okay. What was yeah. he getting paid at this point that $100 was such a huge well, difference, too? It was Arena <laughs> League football. So Yeah, you know. that part, I believe. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So, but now, of course, we have to see that he's, he's, his success with Arena League is getting in the way of his relationship with Brenda. So, and we do this the laziest way possible. Uh, we yeah. cut to a bar where he's trying to call her, but it's too loud and he, yeah, just, he can't even yeah. hear her. They're all celebrating his victory. It's like, you knew you you were in a noisy ass bar would you call dude i also want to know the the normal human translation of this i want someone to translate this whole dynamic from christianese to norm was he fucking all those girls 
<laughs> you know, like that's what I want to know. Yeah, I mean, Thomas, this is your typical like, you know, cocaine arena party, you know, arena yeah. football after party. Like the- At the bar, you're you're just doing a whole bunch of blow and you're fucking everybody. Yeah, oh, it's, you it's, know, it's, the bartenders. It's, it's, but like the movie can't do that. The movie is like, oh, he was sometimes having a good time with his friends after a game. That's bad for your relationship. Yes. Yeah. I guess. Right. Yeah. He's, he's, <laughs> so that doesn't make sense. So was he fucking all those girls? Is that what actually was having? He's or? smoking cigars and like, yeah, to be like bad habits. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because yeah. the thing that was we're really being shown is is that wow, he really should wait until he gets back to his hotel and then call. Right. That's what we're really seeing. Yeah. He might as well be at a synagogue too somehow. Yeah. yeah it's so. <laughs> yeah. Dumb. Why call from the bar telephone? Did was that a thing? Did you have a bar telephone? Yeah. I mean, they had a uh, in the ninety. That, that I don't <laughs> know. Somebody that to would be, give you a yeah. ride or something. Yeah. That's how you, the, the drug dealers would do it. But yeah. Why do that? Why not just, as you say, call right. any other quiet place? Like I said, it's so fucking lazy. And and again, yeah, they don't want to impugn his character, but they want them to have a conflict. Right. Or don't have a phone call at this exact moment. You could just not call now. There you go. But again, it just makes him into being dumb. So that's right. why I'm not sure. Maybe he's just dumb because he any human would be like, oh, we're just having a celebration of the game we just won. It was a pretty big deal. No, I'm not fucking all those girls. Why are you mad at me? I have $700 bills. They can't have him say any of that. They just right. have to sort of imply that he's having, quote unquote, too much of a good time without. I don't know. Yeah. Go out and buy your blind kid the best glasses money can buy. I have $700. <laughs> so, yeah. So, yeah. But th- then we get another quick football playing montage and and he's doing he's doing real well in the arena league. He's an arena league legend now, which is nothing which is exactly nothing <laughs> and they they yeah we get some little clips of like and he's rushed for 12 touchdowns and all that and i wanted to confirm that so badly because i i have a hard time believing that's true that's his <laughs> career he ran in his nfl career he ran 12 touchdowns since so yeah okay oh his whole nfl career i was trying to look for his afl no i'm sorry no his... i no i'm sorry he had three rush, rushing touchdowns rather in his in, it was 12 okay. years of career three three rushing touchdowns. yeah and those that's, are gotta that's... be just quarterback sneaks right yeah, I mean, there's yeah, I'm no sure. fucking way he's the yeah. slowest quarterback in the history. no yeah exactly See, this is why you're not you, did you stay in the pocket or did you run for a touchdown just that's, now so that's think... the point <laughs> we're talking about the fastest league ever what did we say about the pocket this is the fastest league ever Faster than NFL, we're yes. led to believe by this movie. And he, ra- he, ra- he, the Kurt slowest Warner. quarterback yes. in the history of time. When you play him on Madden, <laughs> he like doesn't move. You know, it was like one of those. Or it's just like, oh yes. my God, you can't even move. Okay, well, it's because the league is so fast it's that they were diving in, in front of him because they were so confused by his slowness. They couldn't, they it's like a really good changeup. In like a baseball, you throw a slow pitch and nobody sees it coming. You know that whole thing, how that... The Native Americans couldn't see the ships. That, yeah, that whole exactly. dumbass. Exactly. They, they were so fast that they couldn't see his slow right, exactly. existence. Yeah, their vision is based on slow, fast. <laughs> yeah. Only. yeah. And I love to, we get a quick little, you give him time to throw. He's a dangerous man. And they illustrate that by a guy being completely wide open on the field with no one around him. <laughs> right. And Kurt Warner tosses it like a slow change up to him. Right. Like, yeah, I could do that. You give anyone. My dad could have done that when he's 72. Yeah. <laughs> so, and, and then at, like after the game, he's got, we have to see like, he's such a big star that like, he doesn't even have time for Brenda anymore. Mm. And the way we show this is that Brenda shows up unannounced after the game with Zach and they won't just like let her into the locker room because she says she's with Kurt Warner. Yeah. Maybe they're both dumb. Maybe they're both just really dumb and they don't even have any. I think that's <laughs> accurate. Well, probably. But once again, they need this conflict to exist. They need that moment in the movie where like he's gotten too big, but they don't. Yeah. Kurt Warner is not willing to admit to Heber having done anything wrong. They don't want to impugn his character in any possible way. So it has to be this ridiculously stupid situation. Totally right. It has to be this misunderstanding that would have been cleared up by any two intelligent humans of any kind. Like, right. She's mad at him because she showed up to surprise him and somehow the staff at the barn that they play in did, the Has horse that works her? security yeah. didn't know to let her in. <laughs> right, but I, I wrote in my notes, she's mad that they don't have a relationship conflict to resolve in Act 3 yet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, but Brenda goes to see Kurt with an important message for him about their future, and they have to, like, break up because Act 3 is right around the corner, right? Oh, God. Yeah, I just, just watch Kurt Warner during this scene. He can't say anything, because as you say, 
they have to put him in this arbitrary, you know, stupid situation because they can't be like, well, he was just fucking floozies left and right or something. They can't do any of that. Right. Uh huh. So he just, the way they play it is he just, it looks like he doesn't understand what's happening. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, so you're, up with you. you're breaking up with me to not, <laughs> oh, hold on. Fuck. I got to write this down. So I'm, so you're breaking up with me to not break up Give with me, me more later. Give me more and a rubber band. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, but no, not that. I don't bad, bad that. And she's like, nope, that. And then that's the breakup. I think the movie confused itself here. Yeah. yeah it did. <laughs> Cause she says like, okay, Kurt, you should break up with me so that you can have this better life of I'm not allowed to say all the blow and hookers after all the amazing arena he's league just, parties. He's just massaging his temples. What? Oh, yeah, he's so doing, confused. Oh, God. But she's like, you should break up with me. And he says in the movie, like, OK. And then there's a big pause. And I was like, credits. This is an amazing movie. If he's just like, okay, <laughs> credits. Yeah, right. And, and he has he an amazing was- NFL career with a whole <laughs> bunch of fucking a lot of blow and floozies. Well, or if not credits, just like. All right, we're done. And then uh, two hours of his football career would have been yeah. fucking awesome. Yeah, right. yeah. Just the football. God, it would have been great. Right. So, so, but they break up. And then, of course, we have to show what a great and, and, and magnanimous guy he is. After they break up, he hands her this big jar and she says, what's this? And he says, it's my touchdown money. And she's like, you have a big ass jar filled with hundred dollar bills in your motel room. He's like, yeah. And she's like, I've been broke this whole time. And he's like, right, <laughs> right. We're at the end of the season now, aren't we? <laughs> Sorry, you need uh, blind glasses money. I Here you go. Here you go. Take it. Wait, but aren't you working as a nurse or not? Or maybe I don't still, you know, who uh, cares? Who right? the You're the cares. lady fuck character. You. Doesn't matter. <laughs> yep. Well, and okay. So I love Zachary Levi. I really do. But like, sadly, play quarterback is beyond his <laughs> scope as an actor. That's Well, that's a. That's, That's not a tall order. No, right. Yeah. <laughs> the bad writing thing. It's so good though, because they actually have to show that here. Yes. He's theoretically maybe broken up. He's not sure with Brenda. So mm-hmm. he's just like, oh, after he was like, yes. <laughs> it's so stupid. But it's, yeah, and, and it's it, to do one better, it's an impossible acting challenge. He has to sadly win at football. Yes. Like you, yes. you have to sadly play well. That's hard right. to do. It's so dumb. <laughs> Would have been one thing if he's just like, ah, fuck it. I'm not even going to throw the ball. And he just gets killed by like eight, yeah. you know, fucking rushers just sacking him. Yeah. But no, he has to sadly win like, uh, yes. oh, through a perfect touchdown pass. It's like his mom made him do the chore of winning a football game. <laughs> and he's 12 and he's just like, oh, God, fine. Touchdown. Are you go- Are you happy? Fine. I'll, I'll get to the championship game. Ugh. You know that real mom. <laughs> yes, he's winning Coach. like a semi-final game at this point. A semi-final. Yeah. Ugh. But sadly. Yes, exactly. So but so the game's over and now he's drinking beer with his mom and she tells him that she doesn't hate Brenda anymore cuz we're almost to act 3. Now Brenda is good. Exactly. I have a similar note which is now his mom mysteriously wants him to be with Brenda even though we've done nothing to justify it. I think your explanation actually makes sense cuz we're almost to act 3. It would have that's the subject. Right, there. right. The mom's just like, hey, look, it's too late to introduce a whole new fucking love interest, right? <laughs> yeah. you just, can't just be floozies <laughs> and blow. But mom sure does turn him around. And just then he gets an emergency call from Brenda. Oh, God. This blows my mind. This, okay. <laughs> emergency call from Brenda. Oh, my God. My parents cut to devastation. There's been a tornado. Okay, so here's what happens they drive to the parents' house. And the parents just aren't there. And then <laughs> funeral. Yeah. So was there no, what? Uh, okay. If you get a call that you're, that, that there's a tornado, you're like, okay, which hospital are my parents in? I'll go see if they're going to make it or something. No. Or, you know, they just drive to the house and I guess they're gone. So the parents are in the atmosphere somewhere. <laughs> they might as well pull up at the house and there's a giant sheet over it and she pulls it off. And she's like, yeah, oh, they're dead. I was doing a reveal. Well, th- that's that's what's so fucked up is that the parents are dead. Why did they drive down there? Exactly. They were like, oh, you know, if we go fast enough, we'll go back in time. No, you just, you guys were both in Iowa. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't discover the parents' bodies. They nope. didn't. They you know drove what I mean? They to just... Arkansas. The parents had moved to fucking Arkansas. So they drove from Iowa to Arkansas just to sadly look over the ruins of the house that they died in. Yeah, they play it like maybe we can go rescue them if we get there in time or something. <laughs> but you just drove to the house 
where their dead bodies would have been taken somewhere else at this point, right? I mean, yeah, <laughs> it's like if you got a call that your loved one was in a car accident and they died, and so you drove to where the accident right, was. Right, yeah, you went to I-19 just, or whatever, yeah. <laughs> stood there, yeah, it's like, no, you'd either go to the hospital or I guess maybe the where you have to identify a body or you... You know? Yeah. That's, it, it makes no fucking sense. So funny. But then, so from there, though, we, we cut to there. They're sadly looking over the house. And then now we're at a hotel parking lot. He's sitting around with Brenda and some characters that we've never met that I assume are like siblings of hers or something. <laughs> Who knows? Okay. Just, just to be clear, the main thing driving the plot right now is whether mediocre relationship, <laughs> maybe eventually kind of football. That's what's happening. Yes, yep. eventually football, but right now weather. Yes, we're still on weather. Iowa weather. It's also a good time to take a tally of the God tab here. <laughs> right? God, to this poor woman, Brenda, has, again, you know, devastated her life, had her ex-husband, you know, drop her child, all this horrible shit. God has now, think about her parents' lives. Her parents Worked their whole lives. They were people, salt of the earth, nice people. They finally were like, you know what? It's been long enough. We're finally bought our retirement home. There's a creek there. I'm going to do some fishing. We're going to finally live the lives that we've worked all our lives to have. We're going to finally have, bam, dead tornado. tornado. Fucking tornado kills them. It's the classic parable of you saved all your life. And then, you know, you're fucking, it's a, it's a Alanis Morissette song, yeah. you know, <laughs> it's like they die. The mi and that's, that's what's going on with Brenda. And God for her, like that's the tally for her. And then Kurt is like, "But I have got. I need a football. God won't foot flip." But there's there's an interesting inflection point in the life of Kurt Warner here. So <laughs> mysterious way. Yeah, it's right. It's just fun. Yeah. So and and so he sadly goes back into the hotel room and he's got to pray. Right. So now we're at three point seven. <laughs> he's got to pray to God. Whatever should he do at this point? And then Zach, the, the blind kid, wakes up while he's praying. And then I'm like, oh, Twisted and Zach was God this whole time. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's like, and now I will grant you a great football career because you have been good to my mom. You know? Yeah, it's like a sequel to Bruce Almighty. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like Zach Almighty. And he does. Yeah. Kurt Warner just spits in his hand and rubs it all over Zach's eyes. Hey, stop. Said, stop. Don't what do you do? Do? <laughs> You're supposed to do it in the mud and then put the mud in my eyes. God damn it. <laughs> so they go to scatter mom and dad's ashes. We have this big convoluted bit where he tells her that he'll watch the kids for a few days because he'll be damned if he was going to watch her kids for two days without that making it into the movie. He's a good guy, damn it. <laughs> yeah, after she's lost her parents. <laughs> right, yeah. They just... make clear that like this is the only acceptable time for a mom to maybe get a vacation from being a mom is a day or two after your parents die in a fucking tornado. Yeah. That's the only time. Otherwise, you're you're in charge of the kids. That's your job. Pretty sure. Yeah, and by the way, this ends up, uh, he has to drive home, so we get a nice, good pan shot of driving in Iowa. Oh, God. that's It's literally the most boring thing I've ever done in my life. Yes! Is driving, th I've, I've driven through the entire state of Iowa. Oh. It's so goddamn boring. It's a scene in the movie right now. Yeah. yeah. We had a we had a scene at a funeral for a second there for no reason. Like it's like Kurt Warner's hijacking plots from the other people for his eventual boring fucking movie. <laughs> so stupid. So Just do the football. And so as she comes back <laughs> from her two days in her life as a vacation of the kids after her parents have died, literally her parents died two days off. Mm -hmm. She comes back and Kurt Warner is like, "This is when I need to propose." Yes. <laughs> In front of a bunch of people, so like an asshole. Great timing, yeah. No, wouldn't she have been like, "Hey, I'm still mourning." My, I've got like, my, that was my parents. Yesterday, said there was, we you know, just like, did the funerals. Remember when we dug their corpses apparently out of the ruins of a tornado? That, I'm not feeling yeah. that romantic. <laughs> so, right now, they're, like, they're at the funeral home. He bangs a fork on a glass. Everybody <laughs> <laughs> he gets down on one knee. <laughs> what are you doing, man? That's <laughs> not the time, time. But yeah, but no, she, she's into that apparently. So we, we have some kind of barn wedding. I, to be fair, I'm sure most of Iowa's buildings are barn slash something, you know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. But that's, they get married in a barn. So they put together a wedding during the week between the semifinal yep. and the final oh, of the arena league. No. That's what we're to believe. They had a funeral and then they had an engagement and they had a wedding. They had a tornado, a funeral, and a gate. <laughs> all this happened between it was tornado, a nice little Saturday. It was <laughs> drive through Iowa, all that. The whole time I'm thinking, like, is he, 
the championships like tomorrow. Is he playing? He just had a wedding. Right. Is he going to say, is he, is the point of the movie that he's going to be like, nope, this God marriage bullshit is more important than the championship. So I'm not playing in it. And I just picture the scene of the wife, of Brenda expecting that obviously he's not playing the fucking championship game the day after the wedding and him being like trying to get her to let him, you know, it's like, oh yeah, no, I definitely, definitely don't need to play in that. I mean, our marriage is, that's more important, right? Def- I mean, unless you let me, yeah, unless you, unless you were such a good wife that you let me go play in the championship, unless that happened. No, no, not happen. Okay. We lose our deposit at Sandals. What I mean, what's right. the <laughs> So, but here's my theory on this whole thing though, is that he had a, teammate that kept wanting him to get like to come over for a barbecue before the championship game and he didn't want to go because that guy's really annoying and everybody hates him so he kept making excuses and he doesn't and and like so and he's so committed to the lie that he had to like work that into his book and his movie and he's like yeah and then that week <laughs> you know, my, my in-laws died in a tornado yeah. and then i then i was engaged and then the next time <laughs> next time that he had how he was i was married i was getting married i was on my honeymoon yeah the next time he gave him all those excuses and then had to prove they were all right in the same week. Like yeah. they were all true. Yeah, no, I like that. That's a good theory. <laughs> so it was an 11 day period screenwriters. <laughs> Nothing has happened in this whole stupid fucking movie. And you put all this shit into 11 days. <laughs> But anyway, so then we go to a fucking arena bowl 10 that he there we go. <laughs> doesn't quite win. No. Oh, my God. Yeah. Oh, it's so good. So at oh this point, I was God. like, oh, OK. So now he's like good at football again because he's got love again and God or something, right? <laughs> but no, he fucking loses. He loses. They actually, was, they fucking, I laughed a lot they here Tennessee too. Titans it. They, they yes. come up a yard shy. <laughs> okay, so I was, I was wondering if you guys caught that. Yeah, they set it up. Let's put a pin in this. They have him lose the game with precisely a certain play, which is somebody comes just about a yard short, reaching, stretching out the ball to get maybe the tying to or whatever it would be tying or go ahead touchdown. Right. They they show that very specifically, and I am like, I see what you're setting yeah. up here. Yes, very clever. Let's put a pin in that maybe for later. They didn't see what they were setting up. No, apparently. Yep. They, it's like unbelievable. They, they set off the you know they did the checkoff scum thing. But yeah, they, I was they, they, okay. They, I was gonna save it for later, but yes. No, I won't. I won't say exactly what happens. I'll leave it. Yeah. Okay. I'll leave it as a hanger. But yeah. they set up an amazing Chekhov's gun, yeah. thing, and then they misfire it so badly at the end. It's so good. But they did it. Yeah. Like, why did you? That you didn't have to show that play for how we lost. It's like they had the first two thirds already filmed when they realized they couldn't show the details from the Super Bowl. Oh, what if that is what it, it is? It may be that. But they showed some stuff, though. Yeah, yeah I don't know. It's, I, it's I like don't they know. thought they were going to be able to do something that they couldn't. Maybe somebody else has the rights to the Kevin Dyson story. I don't. Yeah. And then, okay, so but he doesn't quite win the game. But after the game, a guy from a real football team shows up, a scout from well, the Rams. I was going to say, not really. Well, at this yeah, point, not, not, not at the time. <laughs> no, but a scout from the Rams shows up and he's like, we want you to play for a real NFL team. And he looks at the he's like, we've been trying to get in touch with you for weeks. And he looks at the owner of the Iowa Barnstormers, the Jim Foster, the entrepreneurial genius, and he's like, what do you mean they've tra- been trying to get with me for weeks? He's like, ah, I put off their calls. Can you blame me? I'm like, he, he could fucking sue you. Yeah, yes, you could blame What him. if you got injured at that point or something? Oh, my God, yeah. Jesus. And not only that, this is funny. I looked it up. You wouldn't expect this from the movie. He played four seasons of Arena League football. They, they make it like this is his first season. and he, mm-hmm. And then not only that, his last season, he played with a different team. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> so, like, it's kind of funny to think about. Like, they made it like, oh, he played for this mogul, you know, and then he was not taking the, you know, hiding the calls from him. No, actually, he played for five years right. or something like that and left and went to a different team. But anyway, whatever. It's a movie. Okay, so this is a year after the Arena Bowl that he lost, really. Yeah, several. several yeah. All right. Well, we're finally getting close to the only part of this movie that anybody who doesn't have a named character in the fucking script cares about. So that must mean act two is over and we're ready for a break. But first, let me get back through the hard sell. <laughs> Can Kurt Warner remember where he left his keys? Will the kids enjoy their visit to the Des Moines Botanical Gardens? Why the fuck aren't we talking about any of the interesting aspects of Kurt Warner's life? Uh, Find out the answers to different questions and less when we return for the afterthought conclusion of American Underdog. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. And your stripe looks stupid. Doesn't even make you look faster or taller. Hey, Heath, uh, what you doing? 
Oh, uh, just antagonizing these chipmunks. Wait, didn't did we just do this in the last day? Well, yeah, yeah. It turns out that antagonizing chipmunks is it's a pretty solid lead for percussive massage devices and for therapy. Oh, but he therapy isn't just for people who antagonize chipmunks. Hmm. Therapy doesn't mean something's wrong with you. It means that you recognize that all humans have emotions and we need to learn to control them, not avoid them. It's true, Heath. We hear from listeners every week who have used BetterHelp services to help improve their mental health. Oh, what's BetterHelp? BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. Give it a try and see why over 2 million people have used BetterHelp online therapy. Okay, that also sounds better than antagonizing chipmunks. I've been doing that a lot. No, this is definitely better. How do I sign up? Well, this podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp, so God Awful Movies listeners get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash awful. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash awful. Fantastic. You hear that, chipmunks? Looks like I got a better option in your face. Good, because I was eight inches from kicking your ass. Sorry, what? Nothing. Chipmunk noises. Thought so. <laughs> Uh, ladies and gentlemen, if I could have your attention, please, everybody. Did you bring a fork I, and a glass just for that? We're in what, the parking lot. Man. I'd like to say a few words about Mr. and Mrs. Z, uh, Brenda. What's happening right now? Her name now? isn't Brenda Brenda. I didn't know them very well myself. Did someone invite this I, guy to do a eulogy? No, they, I'm doing the eulogy, but when we get inside. As I was say, agree to disagree, I'm doing it. As I was saying, I didn't know them very well. But I do know all about the sport of football. I'm an expert. You play in the arena league. Uh, so, yeah, uh, yes. Uh, moving on. Death, my friends. We're not friends. Here's the thing about Don't death. Don't say death is like football. Death is like football. Are you oh, stealing the eulogy from me? Just jumped in on my thing. This isn't about you, sir. It's about me. Well, okay. It's about the, the Brendas and me and my story. Anyway. As I was saying, don't we tackle one more time. Him, right? Yeah, I think we don't, gotta tackle. Wait, what? Don't, please don't. Please, I'm actually very quick, so there's no chance you're gonna be. Able to, oh, he stayed in the pocket. That's actually kind of funny, though. This is the most interesting moment in my life. I hope it makes the movie. <laughs> it won't. Not gonna happen. <laughs> and we're back for still more of this shit. We're gonna open Act Three in the Rams' home office, meeting coaching legend Dick Vermeil and coaching other guy Mike Mark. Oh my God. We finally get to the part of the movie that I could talk about for 10 hours, but we can't because you've left the only interesting part of your movie for the last five minutes. Yep. Right. Mike fucking <laughs> Martz, the biggest fucking asshole in the history of, oh my God, I fucking hate Mike <laughs> Martz. I, okay. Here's what happens. They're discussing the one, you know, the practice squad backup quarterbacks. They're going to maybe tr try out and maybe they'll stay on the team. And at first, I was going to say it's not plausible that Mike Martz would take backup quarterback number 50 on the team who's probably not going to make the team and single him out as a guy he hates and like <laughs> is beneath the standard of the franchise, which, by the way, the franchise fucking sucked yeah, at did. this point. Really sucked. I, I thought that was a punchline, but the characters didn't laugh. So I guess he <laughs> were to believe that he really thought that somebody says the groundskeeper will make more. But Mike Martz is still like, no, man, I don't want to get a guy for free who maybe could be good. And right. if he doesn't make the team, it in no way hurts the team at all. You just ha keep one of the other guys that you oh, The have. scene is so <laughs> fucking stupid. It's like Mike, this is what I wrote in my notes. Mike Martz isn't so sure about this arena league asshole. Dick Vermeil is pretty sure about this arena league asshole. That's the same. So fucking stupid. So then we join Kurt Warner in Rams practice. We meet Isaac Bruce. I love this moment because he might as well just walk up and say, hello, I'm future four-time Pro Bowl wide receiver of American football, Isaac Bruce. Yeah. It's just so ah, You may remember me from such football. <laughs> yes, as exactly. This, yeah. <laughs> You're doing a Phil Hartman voice? He's very specifically the one player. Like we see the running back who's fucking legend. Marshall Falk. Yeah. Falk. Marshall Falk. So fucking awesome. God, God, I love God that he was good. He was amazing. We see him. It's interesting. We, we totally leave out of this movie fucking Tory Holt. Yeah. yeah. He's not in the movie like at all. And I just wonder about that. Because every player that they show, they had to pay that guy. Is that is that how that works? I'm, I'm pretty sure. Because you're allowed to do stories well, about yeah, your life yeah, that involve. Yeah, but I think in this, I, 
I, I don't know. I, I think because they're using these NFL logos and the, all those rights are so is tight. Up. I, I don't know. You probably know better than me. But. I wonder if it's like personal beefs or something. I don't know. It's it's just, it's interesting. It could be that Tory Holt just isn't Christian enough, right? Isn't Isaac Bruce like super Christian? Okay, that's the funny thing. I was going to go with that as the theory, like, because they also give a prominent role to the the Baltimore Ray Lewis. murderer, Ray Lewis, who is also, isn't he super Christian too? Yes. A- and a murderer. And a murderer. Yeah. yeah. And I wonder if it's like, this is Kurt Warner's, you know, he, his like hierarchy of the people he cares about because they're actually Christian. So he's going to include them in the story. Okay. I, that's my theory. It's funny though. Cause Tory Holt, big game fucking Tory Holt. Oh yeah. Was a bigger part fucking of huge. the offense, I think, than... Isaac Bruce for at least maybe later years. Yeah, eventually. Uh, yeah, I think eventually. Yeah. But, yeah. All the people we're talking about are a bigger part of the offense than Kurt Warner. No, nope. Marshall Falk and Isaac Bruce and Tori. He Hope. got hit hard a lot. Those are the reasons for the success of this team we're about to have be successful in this movie. Kurt Warner happened to be there by luck. Wow. Well, Absolutely. I completely disagree, but that's fine. <laughs> And sorry for how thoroughly we failed at the not over talking about the football aspects of this movie listeners who don't care about that stuff. If that's true, how did Kurt Warner get back to the fucking Super Bowl with Arizona? Kurt Warner fucking rules. I won't hear this. <laughs> Kurt Warner's pretty fucking good though. That team he had in Arizona was amazing. Yeah, yeah it's true. Larry, it's it, Gerald, yeah. It's a team sport, okay? Everybody's got to be good. Yeah, it is. It is, a, it is a team sport. So, okay. Matt Leinert couldn't fucking do anything with that team. <laughs> <laughs> So after practice, he calls Kurt Warner, calls his wife, tells her about the great little montage he just had. <laughs> and, and he's like, yeah, I probably will never get to play, though. Trent Green is so much better than me at football. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, we, we're going to learn later that Jesus don't love Trent Green very nope. much. No, yeah, like I was going to add that to the, to the God's tally. God's plan involves... <laughs> uh. So yeah, Andy's like, but Mike Martz, but in case it wasn't clear by the fact that every time he's been on screen, he's been talking about how much he hates my fucking guts, fucking hates my guts. Yeah, that's real. Yeah, yeah. Mike Martz's theory, by the way, okay, so here's what we're going to get to overall once we get the, the Kurt Warner starting. The moral of the story is Mike Martz, and I think this is actually true, thinks that it's not good enough to just be good at football. For some reason, you also have to survive like a vicious cyberbullying campaign yes. in order to be a good football player. <laughs> like that's the only, and I love it. It might actually be what he thinks, but I just love the idea that like, I don't know, you know, Noah, you're, you're good at juggling. Is there a point where you can't juggle, you can't get a job as an entertaining, you know, entertaining being a juggler until Somebody just fucking bullies you viciously oh, for yeah, yeah, hours yeah. and then you put up with it. You got to prove you can take it and you can stay yeah, in the pocket. Exactly. Like you fucking long haired hippie. What are you doing with this fucking, you know, like you yeah. have to go through that before. No, you could just be good at football. You got to break them down. And then I'm pretty sure you have to earn your father's love <laughs> by him yelling at you <laughs> and you winning. And then is that I feel like you guys are making jokes. Who's. Yeah, what's happening? I hate Mike Mertz so much. Dick Vermeil, the actual fucking good coach and the brains of the operator, the reason they were good probably. Oh, come on. I, you know, I'm going to say Dick Vermeil, he lovingly is like treating his players nicely and is like, hey, we it's, can, so, it's so silly. The contrast they develop. Yeah, here. we can actually just be nice to people. And then Mike Mertz is like, no, you no, have to you literally really make them nice kill people. themselves. Just, yes. But if they don't kill themselves, then they can start. That's how you make diamonds. There you go. <laughs> Pressure. So yeah, so Coach Coach Vermeil calls him and he's like, I'm going to get fired because Mike Martz hates me. But then Coach Vermeil calls him in and he gives him this whole speech about how they thought I was too old to come back to football too, just like they think you're too old to be a rookie. And he says during the speech, and I quote, destiny belongs to the underdogs. And I'm like, statistically speaking, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. The, it's the opposite of that is true most of the time. Right. By definition. Yeah, definitionally Yeah, speaking. like, <laughs> actually, destiny just belongs to Tom Brady, who's won 100 fucking Super Bowls. Yeah, he was a bit of an underdog, too, though, you know. He was, yeah, once. Yeah. <laughs> he was an underdog Yeah, when once. he beat this fucking team. Yes, yes, that one time. And then after that, he was the overdog forever. And I would say history kind of belongs to him. Yeah. You know? History belongs yeah. to David Tyree and Eli Manning. Is well, that's, okay. that's, right, that's yeah. true. No, that's you're true. right. Yeah. That's it. Underdogs. All right. So, yeah. But so now he's on the team. Kurt Warner goes to his big new real football player house. And we have the scene where, so this entire time, Zach, the blind kid, always dreamed of being a truck driver, but he can't be a truck driver because he's blind. 
So now Kurt Warner's letting him drive around on the riding lawnmower because what could be safer than something that has fucking blades spinning underneath it yeah. for a blind kid to ride around on? I know you, Kurt Warner, again, I think he's just dumb. You could just sit him in your lap and have him pretend like he's driving your actual car, even though you're driving, you know, yep. you just do that around the driveway a little bit. Yep. You could do that. No, let's put him in a blade wielding fucking <laughs> danger machine that he could fall out of and get run over. Yeah. God, this poor kid. Think about how many men in his life have tried to kill him. <laughs> 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 poor kid. All right. Here you go. You're in this rodeo. I signed you up. Go. <laughs> like, I put a couple st uh, strips of duct tape. You know, he's he's he'll, he's on there pretty you're good. You strapped right in. You're fine. You're yeah. fine. <laughs> Earn my love. All right. So <laughs> now it's time for the 1999 preseason opener. God's plan, baby. But the, yeah. So we we should point out. So Trent Green is injured in the very first preseason game of of his career, and gruesomely. Right, like yeah. it was a bad injury. Is he like Jewish or something? I think that's what the movie's saying. <laughs> oh, is that Trent that Green be. is not the right religion. So God was like, "All right, I know how I'll do this. I'll work yeah, this out. This is perfect. This is perfect. I'm doing like two birds, one stone here. I'm fucking <laughs> over this Jewish guy, and this is gonna be amazing for Kurt Warner, the Christian guy." But also keep in mind the tally we already have. Yes. So it's okay that God did all this shit to Brenda. God murdered Brenda's parents with a tornado. Yep. Not the best way to go, by the way. Like that was probably a horrible way to go. Murder parents. It's all okay. You know why? Because God will also fucking zap someone's ACL. Right. And mess up their career so that Kurt Warner gets a turn. And that's that means God's good. Maybe Trent Green found God after this. Well, and that's the thing is that the movie has to play it like that, right? It's like Green is gruesomely injured. It's a miracle. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Like points upstairs, like, thank you, big guy. And you know, an like, angel gets his way. <laughs> that's why it's so fucking funny for so many reasons why these, you know, sports people are so into God. It's hilarious. Yeah. At every turn. Because NFL football is a zero sum game. Like if, right. if the God isn't great because of what he did with you, Kurt Warner, if you didn't do it, then someone else gets to enjoy a victory and an NFL career. It's a zero sum thing. Right. You know, the odds that Trent Green overcame to get to yes. that point? Zero percent. <laughs> Why not his odds? <laughs> it's impossible. So, right. So, but now who will play quarterback? So we get Kurt going to see Mike Martz, who, as you may recall, hates him with every fiber of Fucking his hates him. Like I expected Martz to make him do the truffle shuffle to get in the office or something. He's like, uh, you wanted to see me, coach? He's like, you fucking suck. He's like, yeah, but am I playing quarterback? He's like, you <laughs> fucking suck. And he's like, I may <laughs> suck, sir, but I have a rising strings monologue. Yeah. Mike Martz actually says, like, why should I fucking play you at quarterback right now? And <laughs> Kurt Warner's like. You already, I'm, I'm the backup QB. That yeah, that's my yeah. job. And, <laughs> you, you, you're paying me to literally do this already, whether yeah. I do it or not. You pay, you, I, I get paid. I was QB two. QB one is not here. That's who you would normally. It's math. Yeah. Really? I'm not great with math, but I, I do God that. smited Trent Green. What is uh, confusing <laughs> about this to you? <laughs> so, and he also is like, Kurt, stand there while I give you the movie's preview. That's obviously going to be right. You know, yes. You're too old. You're washed. You know, that's whole shit. Yeah. And I love it, too, because you're right. Kurt Warner doesn't have a good answer. He's not like, well, I throw the ball good. Like, I'm I'm good at quarterback. <laughs> He's just like, because it's it's my turn. But I, I, if you put your trust in me, coach, you'll never be disappointed. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, I'm a good quarterback. I am weirdly developing confidence from this. Confident. Oh, it's a trick. He's doing a confidence yep. trick. That's <laughs> like the point. The point is that Mike Martz is doing the like angry dad thing to, right. yeah, to get him to have confidence by. You have to prove yourself to me. Crushing him first. Yeah. So and then we get the presser where where Dick Vermeil announces that, yes, that Kurt Warner will be their quarterback. They're not going to go sign anybody else or anything. Yeah, <laughs> the, this is a funny quote. During the press conference, he says, okay, we will rally around Kurt Warner and we will play good football. I think that's almost exact words. Not great. It's just good. Yeah, which is the real which is the real press conference. They just recreated that exact thing. Not a great yeah. endorsement. It's like he will manage the game good enough that we won't lose so much. much. That, that's what like the head coach is saying about you right here. Yep. All right. So now... It's NFL kickoff 1999. First actual game of Kurt Warner's rookie season. This will be the only game to enjoy this. And <laughs> this is the one we're going to focus on. It's not close or anything. It's not a good one. 
but it's it's opening day. And before the game starts, Brenda comes to see him in the locker room. They apparently know to let her in the back of this <laughs> locker room. Yeah. The Rams have their shit. He learned from the last time, I guess. She says, I brought in a note from Zach. And I'm like, please let it be an illegible scribble, please, or in Braille or something. She's like, I don't know. Yeah. We're not, we don't know what it says. No. Seems like you could just bring the kid to the game, though, right? You like, could have just. Instead of a note, from a kid doesn't want to go to an NFL game? Right. I mean, we would think. Blind, but yeah. Well, yeah, but you could tell him what was going on. Yeah, that's true. He's mowing the lawn. He doesn't have time. Yeah. To go in. <laughs> yeah, I left him on the lawnmower. We know uh, his job he's is. having a great time. He's loving it. <laughs> So, yeah, and then we get the fucking least passionate kiss in cinematic history, and then we get kickoff. And, of course, this is against the Baltimore Ravens. Their star player at the time was Ray Lewis. Fun fact, he murdered a man in a knife fight and never got punished. Is that, okay, you kept saying that. There's been so many NFL murders, I, I lost track yeah, of no, what, it was, it, it, which yeah. murder Ray Lewis did. Yeah, no, so, <laughs> someone in his group murdered someone with a knife outside uh, of a club, and it turned out not to be him, despite all the early reports and stuff that said that it uh, was. Yeah. But he loves God, so. Yep, but know. he loves Jesus, so he's good. We're, we, he was redeemed. But yeah, so he, but it, and he's talking trash and he's going to make this rookie pay and blah, blah, blah. And he, and he even intercepts the ball on his first throw. Yeah. I mean, you should have seen that coming though. You saw Ray, Ray Lewis starts doing something in slow mo right before the yeah, play. Yeah. I mean, obviously, mm. now you ready. know, like, I, even, especially <laughs> as fast as you are. Yeah. You're impossibly <laughs> fast. He's going in slow mo. He, you're getting picked off right. by Ray Lewis. Throw to the other side of the field or something. Well, so I think at this point, everybody looks slow motion to Kirk because he's so fast. Fair enough. But okay, but but yeah, he doesn't do good. He throws an interception. So he gets a call from Mike Martz on the sideline. And Mike Martz is all like, hey, man, it was all an act. I don't really hate you. Now you can play football le better. And he's like, I can play football better. Right. Which, to be fair, is what I would also say if I fucking hated a guy and bullied him for years and then was stuck with him now as quarterback. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah. So that was all a test. Right. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, but now he can football good because he believes in himself and he can stay in the pocket or whatever. So he drives down the field, gets a touchdown. And then and then he kneels down to pray afterwards because he saw what God did to Trent Green. He's not fucking mm -hmm. around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At one point, he, there's they do a shovel pass. It's a trick play in football yeah. mm -hmm. where it's not even a trick play. It's just like, no, yeah, not really. It's just it's like just... a pass that you would sometimes run. And the announcer's like, a shovel pass? Fuck me in the goddamn neck. A <laughs> shovel <laughs> yeah. pass? With a shovel this guy pass? Like, from the arena league and on fast forward or something? This is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Does he have a cheat code? Yeah. Oh, Kurt looks up. He sees his wife in a crowd of 66,000 people. That's unrealistic. <laughs> but the Rams won. I want to point out the Jaguars beat San Francisco 41-3 to that day. Way better than the bigger margin of victory than the Rams had cool. over, <laughs> over the Ravens. They must have loved God even more. Then. Yeah, must have. They beat the Ravens too, 6-3 <laughs> to three yeah. later on that year. So it seems at this point that they're making the finale of the movie game one of this football season. Yep. Which yeah. they kind of do. They just barely avoid doing that. But the big finale of this scene is the kneel down play, which was so fucking funny. <laughs> yeah. Because that's that's the dumb. If you don't know football, there's this dumb thing at the end where there's like 10 seconds left or whatever. And one more time, the team that's winning has to snap the ball. And literally the quarterback just kneels down. Yeah. And it's over. And that's the end of the game. Yeah. And that's the end of the game. And they make this into like a big finale of the scene. I think they were going for like he never wanted the game to end. I think they were like, he doesn't want the, I wish this game would never end. And so he like takes for fucking ever to kneel down, by the way, probably got a delay of game call, but that's okay. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what the, it, yeah. So the big finale is the kneel down of the first game <laughs> and fuck all the other stuff, which they won by like 20 points or so. It was a, he was a big victory. It wasn't yeah, a close it wasn't game. Close. Yeah. That wasn't a very crucial kneel down. No, this was not a Colin Kaepernick kneel down, by the way. This was a I love God kneel down for sure. Yeah. And it's the opening game. So it's literally like the least important win of the entire season. For mm -hmm. Like to thank God for smiting Trent Green. Yeah. And yeah. for God, I wish they would do that. Killed my I wish parents and I wish when he said, I want to thank God, I wish they were required to answer for what? Like, oh, really? What did, uh, yeah, what, did, how, so did how, what did God do in this situation? Explain the plan. Explain the mysterious <laughs> Yeah, what what did God do to contribute to you getting to this point? What tell me? Tell me the actions he did. What did he do? <laughs> and then we get 
my best worst. We we squeezed the next fifteen regular season games, two playoff games, <laughs> yeah, a bye yeah, week, and the Super Bowl yeah. into a quick little <laughs> montage. Mm -hmm. My favorite aspect of this, by the way, as he's running out to play in the Super Bowl, Dick Vermeil stops Kurt Warner and says, "And I quote." You couldn't have asked for a better script. I'm like, the balls on this screenwriter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Holy shit. These are the best words you've ever heard. I'm writing this now. <laughs> what? <laughs> so stupid. Well, so what's even more incompetent about that is that I believe that's based on what he actually told him once they were down in that Super Bowl. It was about the comeback there, I think. Oh, wow. But they didn't set that up in the movie. So as you say, it's just him like just oh, randomly being okay. like, this is the best script yeah, ever. Yeah, that would have made sense <laughs> if the yeah. coach was like, how great is this setup if we actually win yeah. this? Yeah. Okay, that is cool. If you actually, that was what it was, but this movie is incompetent. So it's like, <laughs> hey, Kurt, apropos of nothing, the script rules. Okay, go play. <laughs> yeah. Well, we even have the announcer say it. As I'm writing, man, the balls on this writer, the announcer comes up and says, well, you know, couldn't ask for a better <laughs> script for his rookie season. I'm like, we just, it was a montage. There was not even yeah. a scripted thing. It just said montage in brackets. So, yeah. Let me get this straight. His rookie season would have been an amazing script. Maybe we should have shown that in the fucking yes! movie. <laughs> yeah, that would have been great. Instead, we get actually yada, 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 two minutes left in the Super Bowl. We skipped the entire amazing thing Thomas just mentioned. <laughs> yeah. And now there's two minutes left. And okay, this is this is amazing to me. It's amazing. This is my favorite part. So they show a big, important Isaac Bruce touchdown here. Kurt Warner throws a touchdown to Isaac Bruce, the receiver. And the Rams are ahead in the Super Bowl right near the end. Up by seven. Yep. They're up by seven now. But And then what happens? That's not the end of the fucking game. <laughs> no, because no, it's not. The end of that game is what I was talking about at the very beginning. Yes. The most amazing moment or close to it in in Super Bowl history, in any sport history, it's the final game of the season, and there's this amazing drive by the other team, the Tennessee Titans. Yep. They're down by seven with a minute left, and they go all the way down the field. All the way down the field. They run a play with whatever, 15 seconds left, 10 seconds left, and their player gets to within one yard of the end zone, one stretching yard. his arm out just barely doesn't make it it is one of the like three most famous plays in all of football yeah it's, yep. a, it's which they specifically set up by having him lose the arena championship with that exact play yeah. which i have to imagine didn't really happen like they just put that in for the right. reason oh, it's 100%. gotta be well and then not only that but like i spent the entire time expecting that the reason we had to really focus on his faith is so that Kurt Warner would have something yeah. to do at the end, right? He could be praying to God at the end, oh, please don't let him get in. No. And then we can show like the fucking Holy Ghost <laughs> tie in Kevin Dyson's shoelaces together <laughs> mid play or yeah. something or, what, or whatever, you know? No. Like, you know, there's always that picture of uh, Jesus, like with a surgeon, you know, like yeah, guiding yeah, yeah, the yeah, surgeon's exactly. head. We'll do that, but like Jesus has <laughs> a helmet a, and pads a on and he's fucking... also, he's also wrapped around the, the legs of the player, like he's all also tackling with yeah, like, yeah. fucking up Trent Green's <laughs> surgeon at the same time. <laughs> 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 it worse. Yeah. Fucking with Steve McNair's nose with a feather as he throws it's the so, ball. Yeah, just, none uh, of that happened. The end no. of that game, it's an amazing moment without Kurt Warner, and the movie has to just pretend it never happened. Yeah, you could have built up to Kurt Warner on the sideline. That's it. That's got to be mental hell, by the way. As a quarterback, oh, yeah. you have just you can't do led a comeback. The other team is marching down the field marching down the field they could possibly and and you could have had a great conflict of you know kurt warner again going it's your movie with his faith you know like keeping the faith in that time doing whatever he's doing keeping faith in god and then god delivering him a win in the exact same fashion that he lost yeah in the arena league for you could have done all that. It's your <laughs> christian bullshit you could do that. Nope. They're like, and yada, 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 greatest play ever. In right. Season. Yes. <laughs> exactly. no, they had to skip it entirely. Yeah. They're just like, and the Rams win. And then, yeah, they rising Bruce and they were up by seven. Bruce touchdown, yada, 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 end of the game. Yeah. Nothing happened there. That's what they do with the movie. <laughs> well, and, and oh. then, yeah. And, and then, yeah, yada, yada, yada. You're the MVP. Would you like to say anything? He's like, yeah, Jesus. Yep. Yep. This is when the dude bros were like, Kurt Warner! And they high-fived him. They literally high-fived each other in the goddamn movie theater. Here. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, so, and then and then the movie, like, shows a little quick, you know, and then he went on to, well, never win a Super Bowl again. But he did pretty good. He did good after that. And, and then they show the real people, and that fucks you right up. 
right after having looked yeah. at Anna Paquin and and Zachary Levi the whole time and and Dennis Quaid, it, it just fucked me right up. I'm not gonna lie, it got me. Yeah, that was fucking awesome. It yeah, was pretty good. That sorry, that's it. Super yeah. Bowl is fucking awesome. Could have been a great fucking movie. Honestly, <laughs> the greatest this story of all time. You know what's even more of an outrage? There's not another option that I could find for watching this story. I was in part of the prep for this. I was like, well, I want to watch the like an actual documentary or anything. Oh, I can't really? Find anything. There's not like a thirty for no, thirty type. No, nope. I would have guessed ESPN did a thing. Yeah. There is not a thirty. I saw the only thing I found was a football life, but it, you can't get it. Like I, I don't know if oh, I have wow. to order like the DVD of fucking a football Jesus life Christ. to get this action. It's the best story in sports. What's going uh, on here? Yeah, no shit. The only thing we get is a Christian movie about it. Fuck off. Right. An episode of Arliss. Come on. <laughs> All right. So, and I feel like this would have been obvious by the end, but I also don't feel like it was. What is the moral of the story here? <laughs> Um, stay in the pocket and don't be Jewish like Trent Green, maybe? I, I guess. I don't think he's actually Jewish. Okay, yeah, I think I got it. If if you pray enough, no, if your wife believes enough in God <laughs> and you sort of go along with it, God will kill her parents. Yeah. But but also let you win a football game after ruining another guy's football career. There you go. Nope, yeah. I think. <laughs> What a great God. <laughs> well, yeah, because again, he did the numbers at the beginning, right? He did the one out of a thousand out of a thousand out of a thousand numbers. And so my take on the moral is keep buying them lottery tickets. One of them is bound to pay off eventually. Oh, totally. <laughs> this movie is and this whole ethos, you know, that meme you see of the airplane bomber with like, oh, it hit all these parts of the airplane when they came back. And yeah. then the, ge the guy's like, we should reinforce those parts. And then the genius is like, no, you got to reinforce the other parts. Because that's the airplanes that didn't come back. And that name was Albert Einstein or whatever the fucking meme is. I don't know. Yeah. And it's like that. But for life, it's the people who are the one in a million. That's the, the whole ethos is you could just be that. And I'm sitting here like, <laughs> yep. yeah, no, those people are that. But then what about the 999 thousand people who don't get to be Kurt Warner. What right, are they? Right. We didn't just randomly make a movie about a guy. Yeah. yeah. Maybe we should have a social safety net for a... <laughs> Did they not pull hard enough on their bootstraps? Probably must, must have been it. They didn't believe in themselves enough. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So, well, that's going to do it for our review, I guess, of American Underdog. That isn't going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to lure you and us back in next week. So, Heath, tell us what's on deck. Atlas Shrugged. Oh, God damn it. Part Ooh. one. It's a shrug tacular. I'm calling it. We're doing a shrug tacular. Oh my god! We're so do that one, is, two, there's three of them. Close We're starting three of them. The Jesus. shrug tacular Holy with part shit. one, and I believe Talking about house cats. We might have the legendary Cecil from Cognitive Dissonance. Right on. That I am not closer to Lord in. So <laughs> Cecil for Cecil, you're Lord in by Cecil. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 336 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to Thomas Smith for helping us out today, and a perhaps even huger thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation to patreon.com slash godawful, and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving us a five-star review and sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Skating Atheist and Citation Data, D&D &D Minus, and The Skeptic Crowd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robertson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot to give you the drafts on Mars. All their music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath and Wright, Neil, I Boston, I'm no illusions. Promise to work harder, earn on the trunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with the Breakfast Club close. Colin Kaepernick was raised Methodist and has a really interesting story. Mm. So looking forward to a Christian movie about him. Really <laughs> yeah, cool. I'm no, sure he'll make it. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus went on to like Kurt Warner significantly less for the remainder of his career. <laughs> yeah, God went on to let rapist Ben Roethlisberger win Super yes. Bowl 43 against Kurt sure Warner in what would have been an even more amazing story than this movie, thus proving he either doesn't <laughs> fucking exist or likes rapists better than I, Kurt he Warner. He is a rapist in Mysterious there. ways. Sorry. Mysterious ways. The preceding podcast is a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved. Hear that? 
Is that America cheering or a sausage patty sizzling to perfection? It's time to cheer for Egg McMuffin and fresh cracked eggs at McDonald's. It's time to wake up to the aroma of freshly baked biscuits and treat yourself to a real honest-to-goodness morning meal. Breakfast, it's on at McDonald's. Now get any breakfast sandwich for just 2 bucks. Available only through the app. Mobile order and pay available at participating McDonald's. McD app download and registration required. Seven iconic housewives from four different cities. Look at this water. We're going to give them something to talk about. Vacation at Turks and Caicos. It's a party now. The Real Housewives Ultimate Girls Trip. All episodes streaming now. Only on Peacock.